The proceeding brought to you as a courtesy of the uh, National Football League. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell, Alex Karras. We're at Schaefer Stadium, Foxborough, Massachusetts. The stadium holds 61,000. It was not sold out on Friday. However, they are close to a sellout tonight. Just a few empty seats around. The New England Patriots, the surprise team, as I mentioned earlier, of the National Football League. Much of it done by a bunch of youngsters. Some of them you have never heard of. We will try and fill you in as we go along. All right, Frank. And the Jets suddenly acting like a football team when all seemed lost until three weeks ago when suddenly 16 points was all Miami could get, 17 was all San Francisco could get, and then last week holding the juice to 58 yards and actually beating the Bills with 13 rookies on their squad. They are beginning to have a sense of where they're at in the National Football League. Not pretending they're a good team, but hopefully competitive tonight. Giff? And, of course, Baltimore in the AFC's Eastern Division. They're hot on a pistol. They have a great football team. They're 5-1. and one. New England is competitive, as I said earlier, but they must win tonight. It pretty much boils down to that, and we are just about ready for the kickoff. It'll be John Smith dropping deep for the New York Jets to your right. Number 43, Jazz Jackson. Number 89, Lou Pacone. And it'll be Pacone two yards deep in his own end zone. Out he comes. And Pacone, a nifty run back out to the 26-yard line where the Jets' offense takes over. Joe Namath opens a quarterback. He's number 12 through his first touchdown pass last week. The setbacks are Lou Giamona, number 45, a rookie from Utah State. Ed Marinero, number 49. He's playing well. Rich Caster has been moved out to one wide receiver. The other is David Knight, 82. Richard Osborne, a rookie picked up about nine days ago from Philadelphia, is the tight end. He's number 86. There's your offensive line. It's been juggled considerably. We'll talk about that in a moment. The New England Patriots in their 3-4 defense. Giamona over the right side, and he maybe slips through for a yard as that defensive unit of the New England Patriots moves in for the stop. Yeah, and you're going to watch tonight defensively for the Pats as they're going to run a, they usually run a three-man line, which means Tony McGee, Ray, Ray Hamilton, and Julius Adams. Now, this is pretty good, and I think sometimes it kind of gives the offense a kind of a look at, uh, at a defense, different kind of defense, but as a rule, you can run against them if you run straight ahead, Frank. Second down and nine, the ball resting at the 27-yard line. The New York Jets, they won their first game of the season last week against Buffalo. Name it. Hand off, and it goes to Giamono. And he gets up to the 30-yard line, third down and five. All right, let's have a look at those Patriots linebackers, one of the strongest points on this team. Steve Zabel out of Oklahoma. Steve Nelson, unsung but outstanding. Sam Hunt, another in the same vein. And Steve King. They're all over the place. Great range. The defensive backfield, Bob Howard used to be with San Diego. The two rookies, Mike Haynes and Tim Fox. Prentice McRae with a key interception in the recent game. Yep. Third down and six. That defensive unit will be tested at the moment. Joe, inside handoff on a third and six. And Giamona in trouble. And he loses all the way back to the original line of scrimmage. Fourth down. And the Jets will have to turn it over. Dwayne Carroll will come in as we take a good look at Tim Fox, an outstanding rookie, and he's wondering what the league is all about. He's broken up his hand. Uh, he has a hip pointer. He's broken a wrist. But he still has a lot of potential. All right, Dwayne Carroll set to punt for the Jets. And a bad kick. Off the foot of Carroll. And Mike Haynes just watches it roll down to the 42-yard line where New England takes over a good field position. And New England will open with their young quarterback out of Kansas State in his second year. He's spectacular. He's number 14. The running back, Sandy Johnson, number 32. Number 39 is Sam Cunningham. He's the heart of their running game, and they have a good one. Randy Vataha makes his first start in several weeks. Coming back from a fractured cheek, he's number 18. The other wide receiver, Singley, 84, the tight end. A potential great one is number 81, Russ Francis. They move from their own 41-yard line. And immediately, Grogan wants to go to the air. And the screen pass goes out to the left. And it's Cunningham down the left side. And Cunningham gets the first down in the Jet territory at the 40-yard line. 
Defensively, you're going to see a little change in the Jets, Jets defense. Billy Newsom, Carl Bozoloskis will not be in there tonight. Lawrence Pillars, Larry Falk, Ed Gallagher, who I think is a fine football player. Of course, Richard Neal moves in at the right end position. And they're young, but they'll be tested tonight, and we'll see how, exactly how they do. First and ten, the Patriots. Three and two in the season, trying to stay close to Baltimore in their division. The big man gets the call, bursts over the middle and just pushes jet defenders backward, picks up three, second down seven. Let me say this. Oh, well, first, the linebackers, because at the moment the Jets are playing a 4-3, so they've got Bottle and Martin, two rookies on the outside. The Jets happy with both. The veteran from Penn State, John Ebersole in the middle. Bottle, of course, also from Penn State. The rookie Schaefer Suggs at one corner, Ed Taylor at another, Phil Wise at the strong safety, and Burgess Owens at the free safety. Giff, second down, seven. The ball at the 38-yard line of the New England Patriots. The motion man, Andy Johnson. Brogan fires to Johnson. A lot of room in front of Suggs. He gets the first down, and Suggs laid way off of Andy Johnson. And Johnson goes down to the 25-yard line, first and 10 New England. Joe Willie Namath on the sidelines. We'll be hearing from him later because he made quite a statement this morning on Good Morning America. We want you all to hear it. Meantime, Andy Johnson took that pass. Up here they call him A.J. He's a fine running back. Had been a quarterback at Georgia. First and ten, the handoff. Inside, big man, Cunningham. Inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Gain of six. It'll be second down and four. Cunningham, as you know, Giff, is a kind of ad mixture of a Franco Harris and an O.J. Simpson. That's not to say he's as good as either one. It is to say he can blast straight ahead as you look at him there, and at the same time has a greater capacity, perhaps, for finding the hole and making moves than Harris, something like O.J. Simpson. It's been on the ground, except for that one little pass to Andy Johnson. It's second down and four. Singly in motion, inside handoff. Johnson, big hole to the 10 yard line. Stopped there by number 59, Bob Martin. Now you're seeing a fired up Patriots team with an offensive line that's moving the Jets' defensive front completely out of there as you look at it again. Gaping hole for Andy Johnson. And there may not be a better offensive pair at the moment in the league. Then left guard John Hanna, 73, and left tackle Leon Gray, number 70, in the Patriots' offensive line. Gift on first down. Steve Burks, one of the messengers, bringing in the plays. This is Cunningham, and Cunningham booms around the corner and taken out of bounds inside the five-yard line. He'll mark it at the three. Frank, you know about big backs and the ability to turn a corner. Harris can do it. Riggins can do it. Cunningham can do it, maybe as well as anybody. A couple of years ago, when the Patriots got off to a big start upsetting Minnesota and L.A., he busted a big one against the Rams. He had a great year going last year, over 800 yards, when he broke his leg in the 10th game, and he came back stronger than ever this year. Sam Cunningham. Inside the five, second down. And Johnson pulls in, touchdown, New England. And the New England Patriots wasted little time using one pass. They marched all the way down the field for the initial score with 9.34 remaining in the first quarter. Well, I'll tell you something, Howard, they look pretty good to me. <laughs> Where is that new Jets defense? Point is, Alex, they shifted, the Jets did, to a 3-4. And I haven't seen it in evidence tonight. That's what's supposed to have made their defense under the leadership of defensive coordinator Walt Michaels, who's a brilliant defensive coach. The extra point attempt is the gift. And John Smith pops it through, and New England leads the New York Jets. 7 0. Seven plays they move. 58 yards in three minutes and 16 seconds. We'll be right back. New England leading the New York Jets 7-0. Opening minutes of the first quarter. Set to kick off John Smith, deep 43. Jazz Jackson, number 89, Lou Pico. Smith, high, taken there at the five-yard line by Pacone. And Pacone with another fine run back. Moving out over the 30-yard line. They'll mark it out around the 34-yard line. Hit there by Fred Strick. And let's go back and look at that touchdown of a moment ago 
Andy Johnson roaring in from four yards out, following the block of big number 73, John Hanna. He's one of the best guards in the business. There wasn't too much trickery there right there, Howard. They just put their heads down, blocked real good, and the back ran in. There's no secret to that success. They're just knocking them over right now. Name at the quarterback. Giamona, 45. Marinaro, 49. Those are your setbacks. Name it. First attempt of the night. Going out to Giamona. He stumbles, falls. Gets about five yards out of it. Make it six. It'll be second down and four out of the 40-yard line. Covered there by Mike Haynes, one of those rookie men back there. Under tight discipline by the coach, Alex. That's the way Namath's been throwing this year. Instead of risking with continuity the long bomb that inevitably produces the intercept. Well, I'm sure he has to think a lot about his injured knee, too, and he's going to try to throw a little quicker. And when you throw quicker, you have to throw shorter. Have a strange-looking set. It could be that Castor has moved out from the tight end. We have a youngster in there. Giamona gets the call. Short of the first down, moving out to the 43-yard line. Short by about maybe a half a yard. Or rather, this was Ed Marinaro. Hit there by Julius Adams. In fairness to the Jets, they have sorely missed all year long another of their brilliant receivers because that's one area where the Jets are first rate in the receiver department. But Jerome Barkham has thus far been out for the whole season with a severely pulled hamstring. Yep. Short yardage, less than a yard. Ball at the Jets 43 yard line. 46, 47, 10, and moving offside, left tackle Winston Hill and. It'll give me a chance to tell you that the Jets, because of an injury to their left tackle, Richard Woods, have had to juggle that lineup completely. Winston Hill ordinarily is a right tackle. He's over left tackle. The right guard, Pets, has moved to right tackle. Two-year yeah, man has moved to center, and that's Fields. Austin is the right guard. Rasmussen, the left guard. Yeah, but the count is still the same, Frank. Oh, start offense. Offsides. Indeed it is. I don't know, Alex. You played line... I never did. I had better sense, I think. Well, I was always always good up to the, the count of four. Then I had trouble. Have to be a little tentative, though, at a different spot. Well, Winston Hill, together with Randy Rasmussen in that offensive line, are, of course, veterans of the July 12, 1969 Super Bowl victory over the Colts. Third down now and six. New England up there showing a different front. Namath dumps it off, anticipating the blitz. It goes to Marinaro, and he's dumped back at the 30. Moving all the way back to the 25, it was Tony McGee who hustled in there, and they, he had a lot of help from his friends. Steve Babel was there. Sam Hunt was there. So far, the Patriots have just been overwhelming the Jets. There's Sam Bam Cunningham. What a Rose Bowl game he had a few years back. Four TDs against Ohio State, and he was a blocking back at USC. Learned it all from you, Giff, same school. Deep Dick Bedoin is dropping deep, number 27, as Leahy hits it for the Jets. Tripped up at the 42-yard line. So there's 7-17 remaining here in the first quarter, and we'll be returning to Foxborough in a moment. And it could very well be a bicentennial comeback for the Patriots. They traded Jim Plunkett to the 49ers. <laughs> Apparently that's gelled that team, but the Patriots had a lot of faith in number 14, Steve Grogan. They also got three number one draft picks, two number two draft picks, and a very promising backup quarterback in Tom Owen, all from the 49ers. They were delighted. The big man, right pulling up the middle is Cunningham, and he gets out. Over the 45 to the 46, it'll be a gain of four, second down and six. The Great Jets fuddle in there on the stop. The Jets have punted twice, Alex, and both have been pitiful. They've been looking for a punter for years. You'd think they could draft a punter. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think it's time to get a punter. <laughs> Marlon Briscoe, number 88, a much-traveled football player, comes in for New England. Wide receiver. Stingley goes in motion. Grogan puts everyone in the pattern. It's Stingley, and it goes in and out of his hands. It'll be third down and six. There's Chuck Fairbanks. He was a happy man tonight. We were with him before the game. He just has a feeling about this year's team. Remember, in their opening game, they lost to Baltimore. Then came the victory over Miami, the victory over Pittsburgh, the victory over Oakland, and then perhaps emotionally sapped with the Lions emotionally up, 
They unexpectedly lost to Detroit 30 to 10. Third down. Grogan. Everyone out again, and he goes out to a setback, Andy Johnson, who is picked off there quickly by number 38, Ed Taylor. Short of the first down, right at midfield. I like the way that Grogan throws the ball. He throws it out there, and it's a little dangerous, but he zips it right out there on the sidelines, and that's what you have to do when you're hitting the sidelines. Not bad for a fifth-round draft choice. Aww. <laughs> 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 Lou Holtz walking the sidelines. I thought that was Artie Johnson. I still think the best line ever was when Phil Islin, the owner of the Jets, announced that Lou Holtz told Mervyn Levine of Hollywood, Lou Holtz was the new coach, and Mervyn Levine, referring back to the old comic, said, but he's 80 years old. Frank? Mike Patrick, hunts for New England, angling for the sidelines. This is Lou Pacon, lets it go. Oh, and did it ever take a New England back? Hustling down there was Dick Tom. Flag down now, up across the field. And that usually means that there are illegal men downfield. There's the call. Somebody broke. Only the two outside men can go down. I loved it when, they, when the newspaper men com uh, commented on Lou Holtz and asked him how, how long would it take to rebuild his team. And he said, well, seven or eight years. I don't think it'd be wrong long enough to do that. After the Jets lost to Denver 46 to 3, he said that in the wake of a 38 to 17 trouncing by Cleveland, he said, we do not react well from adversity. <laughs> Illegal men downfield. The Jets say no, they don't want it. They'll take the touchback. And they'll begin operation from their 20 yard line. Seven or nothing. The Patriots taking the opening kickoff, moving 58 yards, seven plays. Using up a little over three minutes. And we now have 6.20 remaining in the first quarter. Namath with play action has the time. Fires out to Ed Marinaro. And Marinaro is up for the first down out to the 32-yard line. Now that's one thing Marinaro can surely do, as he proved during his years with the Vikings. Talkington used to love to use him as a receiver. Excellent hands, unafraid, doesn't listen to the footsteps. One of his best qualities as a performer. Still upset over the fact that they gave the Heisman Trophy to Pat Sullivan of Auburn in his senior year when he thought he would get it. First and ten, the Jets from their own 32-yard line. Amos fire. Intended for David Knight and almost picked off. You talked about Marinero as a receiver. He caught 54 last year for the Vikings. And, of course, he's really come into his own with the Jets as a running back. And, of course, David Knight. Oh, Karis Boy, what a selection. Might be go better. Along with us. Might be better than what I'm saying. However, getting back to the game. A chicken in every pot. <laughs> okay, second down. George Webster, number 90, comes in. He's a spot player. You recall the name. Michigan State, great. Houston, Cincinnati, now here with New England. On second and long. Flag is down. And Namath is down. Back inside the 20. Tony McGee was there first. Then a whole bunch of folks arrived. Mel Lunsford, number 72, being one of them. But again, a flag is down. We'll have to see about the flag, of course, but the Patriots have not been inconsequential in the sacking area this year. And McGee, who just made that sack, had six and a half on the air going into this game. Julius Adams closest to him. That Adams, number 85. What a beautiful ball play. That's a good front three. A uh, quick look again. Number 72 is Lunsford, but it is McGee who makes the initial move. There he is, running from the outside. Circling around, number 78, Lunsford there with him. But the penalty again against New England. It'll be second down and five. The ball out at the 37-yard line. Again, if you follow this game closely, you know the Rich Caster, bottom of your screen, number 88, ordinarily is a tight end. He's been moved to wide receiver. Amos. Guys, Caster, but he throws it short. Back there defending Mike Haynes. And Haynes just about came up with an interception. He's a number one draft pick, and there are a bunch of them. 
That's Richard Neal, the defensive captain of the Jets. But getting back to Mike Haynes, who just had a near intercept on Namath, and that'll happen often when Joe, at this stage of his career, throws long. Mike Haynes is a brilliant prospect. He was the sixth pick in the draft. First round, right ahead of the Jets, who intended to pick Mike Haynes as their first pick. Instead, they wound up with Richard Dodd. The Patriots beat them to Mike. Third down and five. Namath. A lot of time. Goes to Marinell. And he's turned back by Steve Nelson. Also in on that tackle number 52, Steve King. The three Steves in there. Steve Zabel, Steve Nelson, Steve King, all linebackers for New England. Fourth down, out comes the putting unit for the Jets. Wayne Carroll thus far has hit for 30 and 31 yards. That's not professional That's kicking. Well, no, you break it down in inches, it's all right. <laughs> Mike Haynes is the deep safety. This time, Carroll collects it. With Haynes. And Haynes gets back to the 25-yard line, taken down there following a punt of 38 yards. We have 4.35 remaining here in the first quarter, and we'll be right back after this message. We have a near capacity crowd here at Chaper Stadium, Foxborough, Massachusetts. They're watching their New England Patriots, a young team that surprised everyone this year. And they lead the New York Jets 7-0 after three quarters of the first quarter has passed. I'm Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Alex Karras. And we are watching a very exciting team, a team that defeated Miami. They beat Pittsburgh. They beat Oakland before they were tripped up last week by Detroit. First and 10 New England, their own 20. Quick toss, goes out to Andy Johnson, right side, and look at him turn it on. Up close to a first down, he may have it. Now just a little bit short. Greg Buttle in there to make the stop, and it was Andy Johnson who took the ball in for New England for their lone touchdown from four yards out. He's a third-year man out of Georgia. And he, along with Sam Cunningham, have been giving New England some fine running. They are number one in the AFC. Let's look at it again. And the guards in front of it aren't bad either. Sam Adams, 61. John Hanna, 73. Second and short. Goes to Johnson. Big hole. As New England just riddles the set defensive line. And he's out to the 40. One yard line, first and ten, New England. Well, Howard, they're going right through them right now, and it's okay to run a three-man line, but if that's the case, then you have to have linebackers that are very active that'll commit themselves. Now, they ran to the outside. The linebacker on the left side did not come up. He, he didn't commit himself to anything, didn't turn it in, and, and consequently, they're just running right over him right now. So the linebackers have to pick it up and get a little more active. Randy Vataha brings the play in for Steve Grogan. And on first and ten, Grogan goes here and batted away and blitzing right. in there was number 56, Larry Keller, a rookie out of the University of Houston. And that's a linebacker, and he finally got active. Power. Well, Keller made a key fumble recovery against Buffalo a week ago. And you talked about the left linebacker. If you have to look for a bright spot, which at this stage of their rebuilding program, the Jets must do, that left linebacker, number 51, Greg, uh, Greg Buttle, the Jets think has been playing superbly well for them as a rookie this year. Another of the many at that position from Penn State. Second down and 10. Both backs in the pattern. Broken with the time. And oh, he throws the ball. Complete out there to number 88. That's Marlon Briscoe, and he has the first down. All right, let's look at this in replay. Marlon Briscoe, of course, a much traveled player, continually written off, always coming back. Beat out Randy Vataha this year. Look at him. Simple square out and perfectly thrown by Grogan. Excellent timing. I saw Charlie Conley throw that pass 800 times to Frank Gifford. <laughs> Pretty safe for the receiver, Howard. <laughs> Not a bad pattern. First and 10, 45-yard line of the Jets. Singley is the motion man, number 84, the big man. Cunningham with the call. And he crawls inside the 40. They'll move it back to the 40 again of five, second and five. Alex Ted just pouring through right where the nose tackle is. 85 Ed Gallagher from UCLA just pouring through. Well, when you're, when you're playing on the nose, when you're playing on the center as a tackle, you have to straighten the center up and not give ground. Because when you give ground, you're giving up space. And when that happens, they're starting to run on you. So Gallagher's job has to be to straighten up that center, then control that area. And that's what he's 
supposed to be paid for, and let's let's get going, uh, Ed, and let's get the job done. You saw Ronald Briscoe give the play to Brogan, number 88. Here comes the reverse to Stingley, and he's in trouble. He'll go down. Larry Keller in there again with another sharp play from linebacker. Two key plays by Larry Keller. They got him from San Diego. He was in the final cut by San Diego. Jets liked him, grabbed him. Let's look at it again. Here it comes, and Keller comes up, turns it inside. Yes. Nowhere for Stingley to go. That's what they have to do. They have to commit themselves, make him go to the inside, then they're going to get the help. Oh, there's a player from Texas Southern. Four great years down there. Julius Adams, veteran now with the Patriots, and really first rate. Blue chip place. Third and 11. Big draw. Grogan with a strong arm, overthrow, picked off by Sutton. Paper side takes the pickoff, moves out to the 35 yard line on a ball that was overthrown by Grogan. Schaefer Suggs, second round draft choice as we look at it again from Ball State. I know something about this kid. As we look at the ball overthrown there, Schaefer in position to pick it off. He is an athlete, he is a hitter. If there's a question about him, it's sufficiency of speed to play cornerback. But he is unafraid. And another thing about Suggs, he played in the East-West game. I had a student at Yale, Gary Fensick, now with the Bears. He had been ill while training with the Dolphins, a terrific kid. And he knows, as a receiver in college, he knew all about the defensive backs in camp. He said, in his view, there wasn't a tougher, better one than Schaefer Suggs right there. So he's another of the future bright spots for the Jets. First and 10, New York, their own 36-yard line. Marinow looks to the inside and he runs right into Julius Adams. Also in there, Steve King. He gets a couple, it'll be second down and eight. As the Jets have the ball, Frank, I think Alex, you and I would be remiss in the hope that Phil Islin is watching right now. We, we'd be remiss if we didn't wish him well. There's Schaefer, he's recuperating from coronary, suffered when the Jets played Denver. I know you all share my sentiments. Indeed we do. On second down. Inside handoff and Marinaro is met at the line of scrimmage. He squirms forward for a yard. It'll be third down, long yardage, third down and seven. Steve Nelson, 57. Steve Zabel, 54. Sandwiching Marinaro. And now comes a prevent defense for the New England Patriots. That includes a very wily number 80, George Webster, and Dick Kahn, number 22. Name it. Put Giamona in the slot. And fires out complete to Giamona. Still on his feet, and he moves out of the 40 yard line. First down, New York. And what Namath is doing, he's putting Giamona in that slot, and he's working him in combination with one of the best receivers in the business, Rich Castor. And that time he had time to throw the ball. Here it is, watch Castor, and he's driving Mike Haynes deep underneath it to Giamona. And the completion, the first down at New England's 40-yard line. If time runs out of the first quarter, good effort by Louis Giamona, a rookie from Utah State. And we'll be returning to Schaefer Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, where the New England Patriots lead the Jets 7-0. Joe Namath has just passed to Lou Giamona for the first down at the Patriots' 40-yard line. The Jets' first penetration into... New England territory. The Patriots leading the Jets 7-0 as we begin the second quarter. Play action fake by Namath. A lot of time. He has a man open. And going to David Knight. Prentiss McCray made a great recovery as that ball just maybe could have been thrown a little bit further, but it was a good recovery by Prentiss McCray. Look again. David Knight, now he is not all that fast, and that's probably why Joe did not like to hang it up there. His speed man is Jerome Barkham, number 83. He has a pulled hamstring. He's not in the ball game. So he well, had to slow down just a little bit, and that made the difference. That's exactly the point, Frank. That ball was underthrown. Prentice McRae, meanwhile, has become very effective at his position. As I mentioned earlier, a key intercept in an earlier game. Second down and 10. Draw play. Marinaro 
Paranel breaks tackles and he gets the first down inside the 30. Stopped there again by McCray. I must say, Marinaro, as a runner with the Jets, is getting more out of himself than I ever thought he had to give. He's not your most graceful runner, Frank. It's something, in fact, clumsy about the way he runs, but his determination is very great indeed, and he proved it right there, Alex. Well, he, I don't think he had a great chance to run up in Minnesota, and he's get, getting, given a chance right now, and he's going to carry the ball 15, 20 times a ball game, and he likes it. He likes to run the ball. He was shaken up on that play, and he comes out of the ball game. We're going to hear the call now by the official. New England offside. It was refused because the Jets have the first down. Good effort first down, yes, by Marinaro coming up for the first down. There's Pat Leahy on the sidelines. And in comes Bob Gresham. He's only carried the ball five times this year. Came from Houston last year. You might recall his name from the Houston Oilers. The first down, 29-yard line of the Patriots. Draw play goes to Gresham, and he is instantly piled up, maybe gets a yard out of it. Julius Adams is there. Lunsford is there. And Steve King, 52. And Alex, you know how valuable gang tackling can be, and this is what New England's doing. Well, and, and also Namath is starting to go to that draw play to kind of hold that line in. And I know he wants to go to the outside and, and go deep to the outside. That's his favorite, you know, target. And he'll be going to that pretty soon. Prevent defense for New England on second down and nine. Patriots leading. Seven and nothing. Namath. There we go. Firing in and out of the hands. And it was intended for Marinero who had come back in. Apparently not shaken up too severely uh, with that burst a short while ago. George Webster, number 90, back there defending, along with Dick Kahn. Third down and nine. Seems to me the essential thing here is, though, that the Jets have held together. They could have collapsed completely after that first New England touchdown, New England overwhelming them. Instead, the Jets have held together defensively. They had a big interception by Suggs. Two good plays by Keller. And now... They're challenging. They're in field goal position. On third and nine, name it back. A lot of time. Unloads to Marinaro. He will not get the first down at the 23-yard line. Covered there by one of the great ones ever to play this game. College or pro, George Webster, number 90. And Marinaro is down and obviously in pain. And Webster is yeah, also on down. the ground. How many times, Frank, have we been with Duffy Doherty, the former Michigan State coach, when he said the greatest player he ever coached was George Webster? How many times? Well, I think he was honored by his alma mater as being one of the outstanding people of that university, Michigan State University. Let's look again, because both men are down. Webster for New England and Marinero. Both of them involved in the same play, and Marinero apparently caught his leg under Webster, and then Webster is also remaining on the field. We'll be coming back in just a moment. When in trouble, look for Billy Kilmer, number 17. And maybe, too, look for Frank Grant, number 46. Next Monday night, you'll see them both against the Cardinals in a biggie. And meanwhile, Webster has left the field under his own power, but this is Ed Marinaro being carried off by his teammates. We saw the replay a moment ago, and it looked as though on a very simple tackle of Webster against Marinaro that Marinaro just had his leg caught underneath Webster. And since it's fourth down, we have Pat Leahy coming onto the field, three of five for the year, and his longest this year is 41 yards. This will be a 39-yard attempt. No wind affecting it. Bad snap or a bad handle, we're not exactly sure. And taken there by Dwayne Carroll, who does the punting. And Steve Nelson was immediately on top of Dwayne Carroll. And so the Jets have had two consecutive difficult breaks. That was clearly a bad snap, as you can see. Dwayne Carroll rescuing the football. But this in the wake of the loss of Marinaro, and we'll try to get a report as quickly as possible on Ed's condition, materially reduces the Jets' offensive structure. Joe Fields was the center, and it was a bad snap. As the Patriots take over, first and ten, their ball at the 36-yard line. 
Cunningham. And just pulling forward to the 45-yard line. Gain of eight. It'll be second down and two. Hit there by Burgess Owens, which we can give you a chance to tell you. That's another shuffle if you follow these teams very closely. Again, here's Ed Maryland being attended to. But Burgess Owens has always been a strong safety. He's been moved over to free safety for the Jets. And Schaefer Suggs, who was playing there, went over to the left cornerback. Report on George Webster, Frank, is that he's bruised his back. We still await a report on Ed Marinaro, whom you just saw on the sideline. Still in some pain. Second down and two. Good play action fake. And intended for Stingley, but it did not fool Schaefer Suggs. Good play action by this young quarterback, Steve Grogan. Put the ball in the stomach of Andy Johnson, pull it out, and hit it well. But I like the way, Frank and Alex, that Schaefer Suggs, the rookie, stayed with a veteran and swift-footed receiver like Darrell Stingler. Good heads-up football on the young, young man's part, I'll tell you that. Marinero, as you saw on the bench, being attended to, and you always breathe a sigh of relief, even if it's, well, it's a terrible thing to say, but even if it's broken, it's not his knee. It's, it appears to be his foot. Third down, two. Cunningham, huge hole, and Cunningham has the first down after the 49-yard line. Big John Hanna, number 73. Sam Adams, number 61. Those are the guards, the centers, Bill and Kytus. Bataha will approach number 14, the quarterback, giving him the play. I don't want to break any secrets, but Frank, just before the game, got a note from John <laughs> Hanna's wife. I'd like to know what's in that note. Oh, Paige, I met her at the Lombardi Award a few years ago. I'll tell you in a moment. This is Johnson, right side. Turns the corner, and he gets four yards. It'll be second down and six. He just wrote a note. She said, Frank, I met you in Houston at the Lombardi Award banquet where John won the award, best lineman of the year. She says, isn't 73 the cutest hog you ever saw? A reference, I guess, to Hog Hannah. <laughs> Only as Hannah. <laughs> Oh, Dan, it's one of the most colorful men I ever knew in professional football. Used to arrive at Sensenbrenner College with the back in their glory years in a Jeep. Last one in. And waiting the Jeep down. On second down and six. Inside handoff, Cunningham, the big man, rolls up close to another first down, down to the 42-yard line, where it'll be third down and one. Ed Gallagher, number 85, in on the stop, along with Bob Martin. And Lawrence Pillars. We've got approaching on 11 minutes left in the second quarter. The Patriots leading by a score of 7 to nothing. They took the opening. They went in their first possession. The Jets took the opening kickoff after a poor punt. They poured right through the Jets. Scored a quick early on touchdown. Conversion good. Since then, it's been up and down. Carl Bars Alaskas is in for the Jets, number 77, on third and short yardage. Grogan, he'll have the first down easily, and more. Craig Buttle stops Grogan at the 30-yard line, a gain of 12, and this is what this young man has been doing all year long. He had a push-off on his blockers, as you saw, Alex. Let's look at it again. And he goes to the outside where the pressure isn't on. He can take a look around, see if there's anyone open, and then, of course, this is what he does well. And I think the teams that really can co uh, keep a rally going is the team that can have a quarterback that can run once in a while. You see Staubach once in a while, still at his age, take off and run. And He's not Bert, that old, though. And a Burt Jones will have in a couple of weeks. Will you see him, Alex? 12-yard <laughs> pickup, first down at the 30-yard line of New York. Rogan, firing out to number 82, Steve Burke. And he's very close to another first down. Bill Wise in on the stop. And a little practice. Apparently, the New England Patriots were watching what happened to the Jets a while ago. Dwayne Carroll bobbled the ball. Actually, it was a bad snap, but it could have been had. All week, they had a chance to do that, Frank. Yeah. New England was right into the football game. All right, first and 10 of the 20-yard line for New England. They lead 7 0. And suddenly, I uh, had the name Steve Burks, who's coming into his own. Second year man from Arkansas. Cross back goes to Cunningham, and he just about slips for big yardage as Buttle trips him up, but he does get four. 
So it'll be second down and six. Make it second down and seven. Forgive me, Frank. I said Steve was from Arkansas. He is, of course, from Arkansas State which produces more than its share of professional football stars. I forgive you. Like young Winfrey, the running back from Miami. I was going to say that, Howard, but I... <laughs> Don't make a big deal of it, Alex. <laughs> Second down and seven. A good look at this two-year man out of Kansas State, Steve Grogan. It's a Johnson. And Johnson will have another New England first down. If you're watching O.J., that's A.J. We like him, too. The report on Ed Marinara, by the way, a bruised foot, questionable whether he'll see action tonight. But on the whole, a good report for the Jets, Frank. Always when it's not the need. It'll be first down and goal. The ball inside the 10, as you can easily see. We have 8.40 remaining in the first half. It's been domination by New England thus far in the game. Johnson right side again, and he goes down under big number 76, Lawrence Pillars. And he's down to the inside the seven. It'll be second and goal. Here's Ed. Off to a big year, and it'll be a disappointment coming off two 100-yard games against Buffalo and San Francisco. Great athlete. Left with almost all the NCAA rushing records from Cornell a few years ago. Now Cunningham is limping just a little bit, and Don Calhoun will come in, number 44. Three-year man out of Kansas State. Played with Grogan there. Calhoun, he bobbles, and it comes back. A great the... play, a great play. <laughs> that? They Form... practiced that all week, right? Former teammates at Kansas State. <laughs> and New England. With that exciting kind of football they've been playing all year, is on the scoreboard again. Six yards. A play to be characterized as spontaneous razzle dazzle. <laughs> John Smith. On for the conversion. Mike Patrick does the holding. The punter holding for the field goal man. Just as the Jets do. It's good. And New England leads the New York Jets 14 0 with 7.46 remaining in the first half. John Smith will kick off deep. Jazz Jackson, Lou Pacone. Jackson, 43, Pacone, number 89. This will be Jackson. And he bobbles it at the three. Finds a handle and takes off. And nailed out at the 15-yard line. Hustling down there. Romanesian. And let's look at this a moment ago. Calhoun hit there and hit hard as he hit the line of scrimmage. Fumbles the ball. It was immediately picked up by Grogan. <laughs> Moved to the outside. Six-yard touchdown as Greg Buttle really popped Calhoun at the line of scrimmage. Ball came loose and Grogan came up with it. This game is a matter of inches, Frank and Howard. Yeah. Bob Gresham remains at fullback. Whatever that means. <laughs> number 36 in place of Ed Marinaro. Giamona, number 45, is the other setback for New York. Play action by Naaman. Has a man open and hits him right out in front of the Patriots bench is Richard Castor, number 88. Well, that ball was beautifully thrown. And, of course, Caster is a truly exceptional receiver. They did a smart thing moving him to wide receiver tonight. But it seems to me Namath now throws, doesn't throw off the legs and he the body anymore. He doesn't throw with the crispness that he used to throw on, and he doesn't throw with the legs. He throws strictly with the arms, and ball, the ball starts to wobble now on him. There goes Marinaro. First and ten. Casper with the first down at the 35-yard line. Gresham to the left side. Squeezes out a yard. It'll be second down, a long nine. I love that Patriots defense, Alex, even though the Lions scored 30 on them last week. They're very active, especially in the lineback department, and they've got a swarming type of defense. You mentioned it in a different way earlier, Frank. They gang tackle. They're a hustling bunch, and they have a lot of confidence in themselves. Why, why shouldn't they? They beat some of the best in the business. Miami, Pittsburgh, Oakland. On second down. 
Lehman's with a quick drop back. Dumps it off out there to Gresham, who might lose to move out to the 42-yard line, where it'll be third down and three. Bob Powell at 24 on the receiver immediately. That was a good hold on by Gresham because he was pounded rather severely by Howard. And it'll be what you still have to consider for the Jets with their big running back out of the lineup, a passing down. And New England adjusts accordingly, bringing in Webster and Dick Kahn. It's 80 degrees out here tonight, isn't it? <laughs> Temperature expected to be in the low 20s here in New England tonight. Gresham inside handoff, and he's to midfield, has the first down. Good call. It's a trap call with New England in their prevent defense, anticipating pass. That used to be a great Jets call, Frank, in the days when they had Emerson Boozer, number 32, and Matt Snell, number 41. But those days were a long time ago. Ball resting just into New England territory, right at the 50-yard line. 17, 48. This is Yamona, and he breaks a few tackles to save a loss of a couple of yards and winds up with a gain of one. It'll be second down and nine. He broke the tackle by Mel Lunsford and saved about a three-yard loss. There's number 72, Lunsford, doing a fine job getting over there, but he wasn't really quick enough to get to the outside to get the tackle, but he prevented him from going quite a distance because I think they had a little room outside. Steve Zabel and Sam Hunt. The second down and nine. The ball resting at the 49 of the Patriots. Damon, lay up to fake. It just does get it off as he carries. Down goes Namath. And it was number 54, Steve Zabel, hustling in there on the blitz. Steve Zabel played his college football under Chuck Fairbanks at Oklahoma. He was one of ten first-round draft choices now on the Patriots roster. It was Philadelphia who drafted him first. You see him there. And when Chuck Fairbanks got the chance to get him, he did exactly that. Now in that four-linebacker setup is one of those very, very active linebackers we have discussed, along with King, Hunt, and Nelson. And they are into their three-man line. Other linebackers sticking their noses in there. They'll drop out of there. Namath reading a blitz, throws it away, and is picked off by Hayes. Or make it Fox. It was Tim Fox, another number one draft pick. The third first round draft pick. And I'll tell you, as I said earlier, this man has been shaken up all season long, had a broken wrist, a hip pointer. Is playing hurt tonight and just came up with the interception. We'll be right back. That's the story here at Foxborough. The New England Patriots leading the Jets 14 to nothing. 439 remaining in the first half. A moment ago, Joe Namath reading a blitz. Came with the automatic. Tried to hit Castro in a man-to-man -man situation. And it was picked off by one of the rookie stars for this New England team, Tim Fox. New England, first and 10. Their own 43-yard line. Sam Cunningham rolling up close to midfield out to the 48-yard line where it'll be second down and five. And let's look at it again. Namath was reading blitz. He didn't get it. And he just laid it up under pressure. The free safety man was not up close. Castor was all alone out there. He had outstripped his defender. Let's look at it again. If I might suggest, Namath was anticipating that he was going to, to get the outside. Hit. Maybe, maybe he thought that the pass pattern was going to the outside too, Frank. Second down and five. Toss goes out to Johnson. Left side. Turns infield. Close to the first down at the 47-yard line of the Jets. Andy Johnson running well tonight. As has Sam Cunningham. They're not going to hurt their first place standing in the AFC in rushing. We'll have a measurement. Three inches off, Frank, approximately. 
That'll give us an opportunity to tell you first that they did not make the first down. It'll be third down that much. And also that Saturday, NCAA college football, and it's a beauty. Uh -huh. Missouri goes against Nebraska. Missouri 4-2, and two, but they've beaten some of the best in the country. Ohio State, USC, Nebraska undefeated. They have one tie that mars their record. That's this Saturday, NCAA college football. Nebraska really rolled it up last week. That tie was against LSU. That's Winston Hill, the veteran of the Jets Super Bowl championship team. And Missouri... They're unfathomable. They lost to Iowa State last Saturday after routing USC and beating Ohio State. And Grogan takes it for the first down on his own. Down close to the 45-yard line. There's Gary Pitts. You know, I don't like to see a guy smiling happily when my team's behind 14 to nothing and in danger of losing it. Or seeing it go higher to 21 nothing. He's lucky I'm not sitting on the bench. I knocked his head off. <laughs> Done right. Uh, Gary Pence is probably wondering what's happened. He's played all over that offensive line this year. The Jets have been forced to juggle with multiple injuries. Play action fake. Rogan's got a bunch of them open. Oh! Over oh. throws Cunningham. And as we look downfield, there were about three of the Patriots open. Stingley was open. But Taha was open, and Cunningham, well, he must have thought they'd completely forgotten about him. <laughs> we'll see that play a little later on. You better believe it. I have the feeling Pets might have been hilarious if Cunningham caught it and went in for the <laughs> score. <laughs> Chuck Fairbanks, great college coaching career at Oklahoma. 52 wins, only 15 losses there in six years. Very calm, man. It was a fireball when he came in here four years ago. A little subdued now. Second down and ten. Inside handoff. Cunningham. Likes the way this man runs. He oh, gets every yeah. inch out of him. Oh, yeah. He gets inches and inches and inches. Bob Martin tripped him up, the rookie from Nebraska. And it'll be third down and five. Me, I want more quarterbacks who can run like A.J. 14 to nothing. The Patriots. In pursuit of the Baltimore Colts. The Colts, of course, leading the AFC's Eastern Division. They've won five. They've lost one. On third down. Flag goes down and wide open is Randy Vitaha. The flag is down, however. That'll be a holding penalty if it runs two to form, Frank, against the Patriots. It's coming back. Boy, that time Vataha was wide open. The Jets have uh, had success with this new realignment in their defensive secondary up until tonight. Howard mentioned top of the show. The defense has only allowed 23 points in three games. They're getting an education tonight, however. Suggs. Well, we'll listen to the call of Jeffrey Chuck. We have holding offense number 77. Watch Martin, the linebacker, now do his thing. Oh! <laughs> he gets up, though. That's going to happen. It's embarrassing sometimes, uh, Howard, but that happens in a game. Never happened to you. Randy, Randy Vitaha, of course, coming back from it triple fracture of his cheekbone in preseason play. Played a little bit last week. This on third down. Grogan, it looked like a set draw. He has the first down, and down he goes at the 33. Bob Martin made the stop, but that looked like it was a set play. You know, this is a far cry from the Steve Grogan we saw last year in Miami, Frank. Then he was uncertain. We've got the two-minute warning right here. And we'll be returning to Foxborough in just a moment. Are you? Number 17, Jim Hart, St. Louis Cardinals, can hit any receiver like Terry Metcalf there. You'll see Hart next week against the Redskins. Boy, in that Eastern Division of the NFC West really tightened up yesterday when the Cardinals took the Cowboys. Redskins, of course, one game out. And the Cardinals right in there with Dallas. 
I'll tell you, Howard, I like that Grove, and he's five for ten for 57 yards, and one was called back already. He's run six six yards for a touchdown. He does everything over there. You know, Alex, he's had a whale of a year running the ball. He's out over, well, about 200 yards rushing now. He scored four touchdowns running, and he scored nine through the air. Patriots with a first and ten, 33-yard line, and here comes Andy Johnson around the left side. Met there quickly by Phil Wise coming up from his new position at strong safety. Right at the line of scrimmage, it'll be second down and ten. The thing about Grogan, Alex, obviously, is confidence. When we saw him a year ago, he was uncertain, insecure. He didn't have the job, really. There was Plunkett, damaged at the time, but right over Grogan's shoulder. Plunkett, big money player, big reputation, solid quarterback. Now he's got the job. He's a different player. Second down and ten. Play action fake is Grogan. He can either roll or run from that play. Wisely steps out of bounds. He has the first down at the 21-yard line. Well, it's those linebackers. They won't commit themselves over to Frank and Howard, and, and you're going to have to do one of two things. You're going you're gonna to have to come up and, and make that quarterback throw the ball fast, release it fast. You just can't do that and let him do, run like that all day. He's going to go 10, 11 yards all the time. What, are you doing? what he's doing is really almost like the old single-wing tailback. Putting the pressure on them. If they stay back, he'll run the ball. If they come up, he'll throw the ball. I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> well, I read books. <laughs> first down. 115 remaining in the first half as Johnson gets maybe a yard out of it. You know, this morning on Good Morning America, folks, Sal Marciano, a respected colleague of ours, asked Namath, how long he expected to continue playing football? His name it. Well, uh, I don't know. And I've never been able to answer that question, Sal, because it's something that I, honestly, I don't know the answer to it. Uh, I still like to play the game. I don't like playing under the conditions that we play under sometimes. Uh, but I guess that's part of the game. It gets old losing, but it gets old to everyone that's losing. Uh, I don't think I... I play any longer than this year probably but I really like to play and uh, it's amazing how much better I feel sometimes when I go around the locker room and see Jerome Barkham screaming and yelling and smiling and just makes me feel good and cast it up the, the guys that you play football with that you work together uh, they're the highlight of it I mean they add so much to my days I know that it's going to come to an end. I, I know that I'm not going to be able to play much longer physically. Uh, when that time comes, I'll be able to cope with it. I know that. But I don't know if it's going to be this year or next year or the year after. I uh, won't play anymore uh, in the future. I, I wouldn't play another year or two under the present situation, or the kind of situation we have with the Jets. I didn't want to come back this year. Uh, because I felt like for their team they would be making the right move dealing me. And uh, they decided against it for some reason, and I'm back here. And realistically, uh, I knew, and I've stated it before, I couldn't help this team uh, win many games or do much for them. Why did they want me here? Uh, I don't know exactly First down. why, but I'm here. Wide open. Andy Johnson out of the backfield. Touchdown, his second of the night. Well, they're just sitting back there, Howard. They're not taking it defensively to the uh, to the pass. And of course, when he has time like that, he can run past the ball. That's what's going to happen. Touchdown. I'll tell you what it is. He just got him so confused. His play action is so good. Reminds one of a little man I saw many years ago named Eddie LeBaron, who could hide that thing. No one could see it. And he's doing a terrific job. Play action fake. So is LeBaron. Very good lawyer in Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> John Smith for the conversion. And it's blocked. No good. So New England has a 20 to nothing lead over the Jets, and we have 58 seconds remaining in the first half. And that means that one thing, Namath is going to have to put the ball up in the air the second half and keep it up in the air. Let's go back and look at it again. Now here's that play action. And no matter what, that little movement to the fullback holds those linebackers, particularly inexperienced linebackers. 
And a good move by Andy Johnson. Yeah, but they got to start doing something, even if it's wrong. They got to make it. They have to commit themselves. They have to go in, knock someone down. And no one's knocking anyone down on the field right now. They're up against an immensely superior team. That a personnel beautifully coached a team that is on the verge of becoming a powerhouse in this league, in my judgment. And if you ask Miami, Pittsburgh, and Oakland, they'll tell you they're already there. 48 to 17 over Oakland. Going against the Jets, they were going against a so-called nemesis team. During the long series, Jets won 22, lost 9, tied 1. Smith hits it. And it's Lou Pacone at his own 10. Pacone up to the 23-yard line. 53 seconds remaining on the clock. The Jets take over. Again, remind you at halftime, some interesting plays from yesterday as we present our highlights to our custom every Monday night at halftime. When behind, don't despair, because we'll win if you <laughs> care. All right, come on, Jets. Those are the words of Lou Holtz, amateur magician, songwriter. He needs to be a magician, I'll tell you that. He also practiced them in standing erectly for the national anthem. Nothing wrong with that. On first down. Flag is down. Namath with a man over the middle. And it's David Knight. Short of the first down, but again, flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Knight hit there by Prentice McRae. Illegal procedure goes against the Jets. Could have been Lou Pacone, number 89. He was discussing with the official. Interestingly, Alex, New England in the second quarter has had but two possessions, two touchdowns, total of 22 plays. It was Lou Pacone. So it'll be first down and 15, and I would not be surprised if Joe will just be a little careful with it at this point. 47 seconds remaining in the first half. No, he goes into his passing offense. Fires and it goes out to number 45, Lou Giamona. Short of the first down. Giamona out to the 35-yard line. 41 seconds remaining in the first half. Lou Holt pacing the bench. Another thing he does not like is the cold. He told his players, if it gets cold up there, he said, I'm going to go inside and watch it. Second down. Again, night wide open over the middle, and another flag goes down. Knight has the first down with 33 seconds remaining in the half, but a flag is down. Holding against New York. Always the question is asked, in spite of this penalty, why do teams seem to have the ability in the final two minutes to move the football so successfully, whether the final two minutes of the half or the game? Depending on game situation, Frank, as in this case, I think the answer is clear. New England's willing to give them the short yardage. Absolutely, they're looking at the number 78. Second. They're looking at the clock also. Gary Pitts, the right tackle for the Jets, guilty of holding. Number 78, there it is. You'll see what they call holding. And he was holding everything that Tony McGee had. Well, I guess he had something to smile <laughs> about that. Yeah. <laughs> Second down, 13. Ball at the 25. Namath still keeps it in the air. Giamona. And Giamona makes some nifty moves. He's out close to a first down. Out to run the 38-yard line with 26 seconds on the clock. I think you're right about the two-minute situation, Howard. They, the defense kind of backpedals, lets them catch it in front of them, tries to eat up the time, and that's the reason that they, they, they complete a lot of their passes in the two-minute drill. Of course, it backfires once in a while, too. We played Baltimore one year. We played Baltimore one year, and our tight end caught the ball, and they were trying to eat the clock up. They kept backpedaling, and they backpedaled 60 yards. We went in to score. 
Well, it can backpedal against a team so proficient as Dallas, which so gifted a quarterback as Starback and receivers like Pierce. Third down, short yardage. Diamona has the first down up to the 45 yard line, and I suspect the Jets will call timeout, which they do immediately. So Namath, who was not willing to let the clock run out with 58 seconds, moves over to have a tip tap with head coach Lou Holtz. The Patriots leading the Jets, 20 to nothing. An explosive first half for these young New Englanders. And with an apparent route underway, it already verges on being that. One would expect that we might see something of the young other quarterback from Alabama in the second half, Frank Richard Todd, number one draft choice of the Jets this year. Well, I would stay with this man. He has not been having that kind of bad night. It's the Jets' defense that has hurt them tonight. New England just moving up and down the field. Well, that's the defense that we thought was so much improved based upon the last three games. Well, they've shaken it up so much. You never know. They, you know, they come out and have one good game and have maybe have two bad games in a row. First down, the ball at the 44-yard line of the Jets. Amos. And it's Rich Caster, and Caster's down to the 33-yard line. Ball ripped loose, but it's ruled dead right there. Namath took quite a shot, and Namath is up and limping. No, it's ruled incomplete. And Namath is limping. He took quite a blow as he released the ball. He had a badly strained calf last week, went out at halftime in the Buffalo game. And that pass ruled incomplete. And when it looked like Castor had dug it out. Let's take a watch at Tony McGee. And I think it's Austin who's knocked back into Namath. It is. His right guard, number 67, was knocked back into Namath. Second down and 10. 13 seconds remaining in the half. And it goes to Gresham. Gresham sprinting towards the sidelines, out of bounds at the 48-yard line, short of the first down, which means very little at this point with six seconds remaining in the half. Well, going back to number 12, Joe Willie Namath. You have to respect the man. He's got unending courage, has played under conditions where most would not. He has been one of the best quarterbacks, as Frank said, of all time. There can be no loss of respect, only maybe even a building of it in this tough time for him. Third down. Only thing he could possibly think of is the bomb. And there it is. And everyone is back there with Knight. The flag is down at the line of scrimmage, and it's picked off back there. But again, a flag is down. It was Dick Kahn, number 22. Time has run out here in the first half. Offside. And well, the half cannot, the play. cannot end on a defensive penalty. Name is still favoring what appears to be his right leg, and that is the problem he had last week. He has had five knee operations. He's had an incredible amount of trouble with a pulled hamstring that he sustained water skiing a couple of years ago, and last week he suffered a strained right calf. Here's the call. We have the left defensive end offside. There will be one more down, untimed. An untimed down because a period cannot end on a defensive penalty. And the name it very wisely. He does not try to go against the secondary that was perched all the way back to the 10-yard line. That was Gresham, and that's the end of the first half. The New England Patriots lead the New York Jets 20-0. Stay with us for yesterday's highlights. And our very best to NASC, whoever NASC is. National Association. I'll get the other ones for you later. We're back at Foxborough. 
Steve Grogan, who had a whale of a first half for the New England Patriots. He has fired up this football team on the spot with the trade of Jim Plunkett to San Francisco. He has come through like an all-pro, and he may be headed in that direction. That's what he's done tonight, 5 of 10, but it does not say all of what he's done. He's ran the ball well. Meanwhile, his counterpart, Joe Namath, having his problems, not so much his problems, the fact that a defense that had played well for the past three weeks has been performing poorly here tonight. And you never know whether the defense is playing badly or whether or not the offense is just that good. And I have a feeling that it could have a little bit of both. That's what you call hedging. Yeah, I was going to say that. Right there, the statistics bespeak the importance of this particular contest, at least from the point of view of New England. They must win it to stay just a game behind Baltimore in the Eastern Division of the AFC. They honestly believe they can beat Baltimore in the return contest. Why not? After you've beaten the likes of Oakland, Pittsburgh, and Miami. Miami is a better team than its two and four record suggests. Buffalo is floundering and now has a new coach and Jim Ringo, one of the old Packers who Frank used to play against. And the Jets record speaks for itself. Jets have a long period of rebuilding ahead of them. But the Patriots team has been rebuilt. As they've demonstrated in the first half, they are young. They're enthusiastic. They're exciting. And Steve Grogan is one of the most exciting young quarterbacks we have seen in a long, long time. Built like Greg Landry, but apparently with much more ability. Although I must say in his early years, Greg used to run much like Grogan does now. And we'll have another one in a couple of weeks coming up. Of course, it'll be St. Louis and Washington in the Eastern Division of the NFC next week. Then in two weeks, we'll be looking at Burt Jones. And deep for New England is Jess Phillips, number 35. Pat Leahy will kick off for New York. I'm sure they've talked to that Jet defense, and they're going to come out roaring in the second half. They have to. They have to stop Grogan. Leahy. And it's Phillips the two-yard line. Ooh, and Phillips has met and met hard at the 25. It was Mike Hennigan getting down there quickly, and let's meet the New England offense. Let them introduce themselves. Steve Grogan, quarterback, Ottawa, Kansas. Andy Johnson, running back, Athens, Georgia. Sam Cunningham, running back, Santa Barbara, California. Marlon Briscoe, wide receiver, Omaha, Nebraska. Darryl Stingley, wide receiver, Chicago, Illinois. Russ Francis, tight end. Kylo Oahu. There they are. They take over first and ten. Their own 26-yard line. The motion man, Stingley. The toss goes to Cunningham. Left side, flag down as Cunningham collects four yards. But again, a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Interesting point of observation, gentlemen. New England rode to that 20 points in the first half without any apparent use of the great tight end, Russ Francis. Earlier in the season, Frank, you'll remember I said I thought, well, let's watch the face off of the penalty and hear the announce. Our referee tonight, Chuck Heberling, doing a fine job. There's the walk-off. It's one of your biggies. <laughs> we have holding offense number 70. The call, Leon Gray, the left tackle. For the New England Patriots, offensive line, Bill and Kytus is at center, 67. The guards, and they're good ones. Number 73, John Hanna. Number 61, Sam Adams. Gray at left tackle. McKay at right tackle, 66. Randy Bataha, all the nation with wide receivers. He's number 18. He brings in the play of second down and 20. Or rather, first down and 20. And the end around, Russ Francis. Yeah, he does. And Francis corralled out there at the 24-yard line. And let's let the defensive unit of the Jets introduce themselves. Lawrence Till of defense in Hayden Harrison, Mississippi. Larry Falk, defensive tackle, Cincinnati, Ohio. Ed Gallagher, defensive lineman, Hayward, California. Richard Neal, defensive end, New Orleans, Louisiana. And there they are. It's second down and 12 for New England. They have a 20 to nothing lead. Most of it coming through the efforts of this man, young Steve Grogan out of Kansas State. Grogan, and Grogan takes a shot on a blitz. 
And Phil gets it off to Randy Vataha. Close to the first down. And Grogan changing that play at the line of scrimmage. And let's meet some of these linebackers of the New York Jets. They're young. Here they are. Greg Bottle, linebacker, Penn State University, Linwood, New Jersey. John Eversole, linebacker, out to Pennsylvania. Bob Martin, linebacker, Davidson, Nebraska. Bataha gets the first down. Ball at the 37-yard line, just underway here in the second half. New England with the ball, the motion man is Johnson. The big man gets the call, tries to break to the outside, does. And look at Cunningham. He goes up to the 44, a gain of seven. It'll be second and three. The other thing I like about Grogan so much, Alex, is that he's absolutely unafraid. We saw a demonstration of that when the blitzing linebacker was in there on him. Never changed. Didn't push his throw. Got it off to Bataha. He took the blow, and he took it his way. He is a rising young professional. Courtesy of Frank Sinatra. Forgive me. Alex, your sign is falling. Second down and three. Johnson, the motion man. Grogan, Johnson wide open again as he was in the first half. Up oh. in front of the cornerback, Schaefer sucks. He really puts his head down, barrels in with his shoulder. He's a beautiful running back, Andy Johnson. Frank, you mentioned Bill Lenkaitis as the center in that Patriots team. I think he's one of the most interesting men in the league. He apparently retired a year ago, but decided to come back while they develop young Pete Brock, the big one from Colorado. He is a practicing dentist, Frank. Practices dentistry four days a week. And we have a first down and almost picked off. Going for it was number 38, Ed Taylor. Let's meet the defensive backs of the New York Jets. Schaefer Suggs, defensive back, Elkhart, Indiana. Ed Taylor, cornerback, Memphis, Tennessee. Philip Wise, safety, Omaha, Nebraska. Burgess Owens, free safety, Tallahassee, Florida. I kind of miss Steve Tannen back there. Of course, he used to. He was op always openly admitting that he was a team player and that he wouldn't make he wouldn't make a tackle unless the whole team. Well, we just tackle with him. Alex, we just had one of those major mentalities pour onto the field. He's being duly escorted off by the police. I thought he was a free agent. Being assisted off. Sometimes you wonder about the mentality. Indeed, you do. Second down and ten. Grogan. It's one way, rolls the other, has Hannah in front of him. Hannah with a good block. Look at Grogan. All the way. Boy, and when we go back and look at it, watch the block of number 73, John Hannah. This is a set play. Oh, the football player that young man is. If he's not in the lead for player of the year in the league up to this point in the season, I don't know who is. Let's look at it again and watch for the block that Frank told you about. There's 73, John Hanna, presently out of your picture, but back in it now. Look at that. That enabled Grogan to cut back, and he just poured through that little slit of a hole there and on in for the touchdown. Of course, I was talking about commitment to the linebackers, and Bob Martin that time just posted laid back of the line of scrimmage and didn't go either up or didn't go back, and of course, that's what happened. Got his... Got knocked down. And Burgess Owens being assisted off the field. Shake it up. Probably the best man defensively for the Jets, playing at free safety. Tried to get in the play. Shaken up. He's limping off. That run, 41 yards. That means that Grogan on the night has gone for 95 yards. John Smith for the conversion. Drills it. This time it's not blocked. 27 0. The New England Patriots over the New York Jets. And let's look at it again. Because this is the new breed of quarterbacks in the National Football League. They can throw the ball, they run a ball cub with authority, and they can do this. They're mobile, they can run. Now, this was a set play. Grogan with the quick flip to the right, throws the defense. Hannah got in front of it, number 73. Number 70 is Leon Gray. Grogan, as he was at Kansas State, a fine runner, cuts back. 41 yards, touchdown. 
And I just add, Frank, that I suggested at the very top of the telecast as action began and the Patriots moved in for their first score, it is possible that 73 Hannah and 70 Gray are as good an offensive line tandem as we currently have in the league. And when I talk about Grogan, I say up to this point, recognizing the brilliance of his performance, I also recognize the brilliance of number seven, Burt Jones of the Colts, whom we'll be seeing in two weeks against Houston. John Smith will kick off for New England. Jackson and Pacon are deep. Get up! Pacon at the 15-yard line. And Pacon out over the 35 to the 36-yard line. And let's meet the Jets offense. Here they are. Hi, I'm Joe Namath. I play quarterback on Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, but I spent a lot of time in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Rudy Giamona, running back, Palos Verdes, California. Ed Marinero, running back, New Milford, New Jersey. David Knight, wide receiver from Williamsburg, Virginia, home of the third presidential debate. Richard Osborne, tight end, San Antonio, Texas. And of course, Richard Castor is playing a wide receiver tonight rather than that tight end position. Back to the action with 13.56 remaining in the third quarter. It's been all New England. They lead 27 0. They know. Dumps it off. It goes to Gresham, and he's tripped up immediately. Number 50, Sam Hunt, out of Stephen F. Austin. A 15th round draft pick, if you will. 1974 became a starter immediately. The Patriots show no signs of letting up. They're determined to make amends for a lot of setbacks at the hands of the Jets in past years. Next week, a big one. Eastern Division NFC, RFK Stadium, Washington, the Redskins against the Cardinals who upended Dallas yesterday. Second down and 13, the ball inside the 35-yard line of the Jets. Quick handoff inside, and Gresham again, pounding out short of a first down to just about the 47-yard line. Let's meet the front three, the defensive unit of New England. Here they are. Tony McGee, defensive end, Battle Creek, Michigan. Ray Hamilton, Noah's guard, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Drew Sullivan, defensive end, Macon, Georgia. And they have each and every one of them introduced themselves to Joe Namath tonight, personally. Third down, short yardage, less than a yard. Steve Davis, 35, is in the lineup now. It's set back for the Jets, gets the call. And boy, he will not get the oh, first down. Yeah. He's met by Sam Hunt. They just nailed it. And did you see the movement in that line? Oh, yeah. That's... Clearly it had name it thinking, Alex. Oh, yeah. And the, and the linebackers are coming. They're not waiting. They're not taking the blows. They're giving the blows tonight. That's the difference right there. That's the difference in the defense. Jets waiting, taking the blow, and the Pats just coming right on. They are the pitchers, not the catchers, Howard. Mm -hmm. They're going to measure this. I do believe he's short. He's two and a half inches short, Frank. He was really drilled by Sam Hunt. Two and a half inches, you said, Alex? <laughs> That's my 27, the 57 Jets vision. The You've got Jets, a new problem. The Jets will not cut, trailing 27 nothing early in the third quarter on fourth down. They better change the play. Right side, big hole, breaks the tackle inside of Patriot territory at the 47. First down, New York. Well, give Lou Holtz credit for that. Steve Davis has had one major problem this year. He's had a hard time holding on to the ball. He's fumbled five times. Three times against Miami, twice last week against Buffalo. And when that starts to happen to a back, you'll see him start to really put the clutch on it. They have I don't More of your lame heads on the field. That's the delay at the moment. Give Steve Zabel a chance to zip over to the bench and have a word with head coach Lou Holtz. Underway again, first and ten. Ball at the 47-yard line of New England. Damon, play action. 
complete out there to Davis, and he holds on and <laughs> takes uh, Davis bounce, and he comes down with it close to a first down. When he was with the Steelers, Frank, as a rookie, I thought he was going to become one of the stick-out ball carriers in the league. Has tremendous strength. Great speed. Leaving aside the question of fumbling as we look at it again, he is a moody fellow, and he twice apparently quit football, once with the Steelers and once with the Jets. And those things you just can't predict, and you just therefore can't really count on a ball player. He gets the first down for New York. You know, this is disgraceful. Ball at the 37-yard line. There are more of what Frank called lameheads, which is too kind a word on the field. Enough's enough. We won't even show them on camera. That's possibly what they're looking for. But they're enough to make you wonder about the sports syndrome. Well, let's don't blame it on sports. No, I'm talking about the syndrome oh. related there to it. Let's play it's a room. philosophical Makes you matter. wonder about the syndrome, huh? Richard Osborne has split out now as a wide receiver. He's been playing tight end. On first down, flag goes. Namath pumps as he once again attracted the attention of a blitzing linebacker, Steve Zabel. Couple of flags down. One illegal procedure preliminary indication. Eleven oh nine remaining here in the third quarter. It's been all New England. <laughs> Pretty much an all Steve Grogan show. Let's listen to the call. Illegal motion, offense number eighty eight. Refuse. Call goes against Rich Caster. Part of the huge crowd that has turned up here. <laughs> this is two jet receivers in. <laughs> Again, Gresham hasn't played that much, and Caster's playing a new position, but obviously they're in the wrong areas. Second down and 10. Clark Gaines, 21, is in the lineup. He gets the call. And Gaines gets about five yards. It'll be third down and five. Let's beat the linebackers for New England. Here they are. Steve Zabel, linebacker, Denver, Colorado. Steve Nelson, linebacker, Anoka, Minnesota. Sam, big back of Hunt, weak inside linebacker, White Oak, Longview, Texas. Steve King, outside linebacker, Quentin, Oklahoma. Well, Sam doesn't like the band anymore. Yeah. Sam Hunt. That'll be third down and four. Gaines collected six on his run. Namath. Firing, and it's almost picked off. It was Tim Fox who got an interception earlier, moving across from free safety, stepping in front of Richard Castor. Well, we're watching. We're watching a sad thing. We're watching Namath, really, I think, at the, at the end of his career, and really his legs have given out on him, and he's been throwing the ball all night, really, uh, strictly with his arms. He doesn't have that great leverage in the base anymore, and he's, he's just winging the ball, and consequently the ball is starting to duck-like into the other areas of the football field, and it's a sad thing to, think, uh, to say, but I think this is the end of the name of his career. Uh, it's fourth down. The Jets are going to go again on fourth down. Fourth down. Call it a long three. The ball at the 30-yard line of New England. Uh-oh. And he unloads it, and it goes to Gaines. Gaines has the first down inside the 25, and Namath got popped again. He really did. I don't know how he keeps getting up. He's limping now in the left leg. You see it? Courage is the word for that man. He was really riffled out in San Francisco. He was sacked out there five times. That's, that was not unexpected because we saw San Francisco do a job on L.A. last week. Ten times against James Harris, who's now out of action in the highlights. You saw Pat Hayden taking over for him, leading the Rams to that 2012 victory over the Bears. By the way, they got a cornerback named Monty Jackson, second-year man from San Diego State, who had three interceptions yesterday, Frank. Six on the year. He's already tied the team record for interceptions. We have 9.54 remaining here in the third quarter. Game being held up again by some interesting folks up here in New England. 
Johnson got on the scoreboard for New England first, going in from three yards out. Grogan then recovered a Calhoun fumble, went in from six yards out to make it 14 to nothing. Johnson had a 10-yard touchdown pass from Grogan, make it 20 to nothing. Grogan went in on a 41-yard run to make it 27 zip. That's been the scoring. The game has been all New England. On first down, Namath up in the air again. And this time back there defending another rookie, Mike Haynes, against Rich Caster. Oh, can that Mike Haynes run, by the way. We haven't had the opportunity to see him bust one tonight on a kick run, but he did that. He showed his wares early in the preseason. NCAA college football coming up this Saturday, Missouri and Nebraska. They don't necessarily like each other. Missouri, 4-2 record. Nebraska, undefeated, 5-0-1 thus far. Missouri, you might recall, the people who pulled off the upset against Ohio State, against USC. This Saturday, NCAA college football. Second down and 10. Namath throws it up on the blitz, and a flag is down. Intended for Dave Knight, but the Patriots are trying to confuse a line that is already confused by position because the Jets have been forced to move their guards to tackles. They're one tackle to center, and this is the result of it. Well, they're shooting defensive backs and, and right. linebackers and everybody now, and I think that's what they should have done to Grogan. They, they should have made him commit himself, either throw the ball fast or run the ball, and, and they didn't do that. They laid back, and you can't do that against a quarterback that can run and pass. I think you're exactly right. And right he's telling the rest of the guys, he said, they should have done that to me. In the last play, you saw Prentice McRae, number 34, blitzing. The Lions, the Lions went after Grove in the last game, and they were very successful. Second down and five. The ball inside the 20th and 19th. Offside penalty against New England. Namath has a man open. And going for Steve Davis and hustling back there was Tim Fox. And I like these two rookies. Mike Haynes out of Arizona State, a first-round draft pick. Tim Fox, a rookie out of Ohio State, another first-round draft pick. Well, you've emphasized Tim Fox's difficulties earlier on, Frank. This kid playing with a hip pointer. This a kid playing with sprained knee ligaments. This a kid playing with a broken bone in his hand and a cast on his hand. And still he's out there, and he's giving nothing away. So courage is the word, too, for Tim Fox. Third down. Amos. <laughs> Flips it out. Richard Osborne has the ball. Uh, he's close to the first down. I believe he has it. The rookie from Texas A&M, a ninth-round draft pick by Philadelphia that came to the Jets about 10 days ago. First down, and the Jets have been forced to use fourth down plays twice to keep this drive moving. But it's the first sustained drive they have really had in this football game. Well, of course, this is the toughest time to pass when the defense knows you're going to throw the ball. They're more apt to play as a real passing defense. First and ten, the ball at the 12-yard line. Namath letting his backs, and he finds Gaines, and Gaines finds the end zone. Clark Gaines scores on a Namath touchdown pass, and one thing you got to admire Namath for is he hits the rookie from Wake Forest for the six points. He's been hit all night long, and he still puts his backs in the pattern. He could keep him in there to protect him, but he has not done that tonight. That's an excellent point. It's absolutely true, and again, a manifestation, as you said, of this guy's courage. I don't think anyone's ever questioned it. He, I like to watch him play. He's thrilled us on Monday night, suggested never won on Monday night, but he has given us some great thrills. Remember that game against oh, Oakland that wound up it. the season? Pat Leahy makes it seven for the Jets. They trail the New England Patriots 27 to seven. And we'll be returning to Foxborough in just a moment. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Alex Karras. We've been watching a very strong New England team. New York just getting on the scoreboard. Joe Namath with a touchdown pass to Clark Gaines. Leahy hits it for the Jets. Jess Phillips. And Phillips. Breaks one tackle and gets out over the 30-yard line to the 32. I love to watch him run, Howard. Yeah, I don't understand why he's traveled so much. Let's look at that touchdown pass again by Joe. The play action there, the 35, and then hitting the rookie from Wake Forest, Clark Gaines, who pulls his way in. 
for the touchdown. So that made our score 27 to 7. Looking at it again, another angle. Nicely thrown there, Alex. He can still he can still pick you apart as long as he can throw the short one, but he can't throw that long with, with any consistency anymore. On first down, Cunningham gets a call and moves out of the 35 to the 38-yard line. It's a gain of six. It'll be second down and four hit there by John Ebersole, number 55. There's Dale on the sideline. Had a troubled year. He's been banged around pretty good. And as he also said in that interview this morning on the Sal Marciano on Good Morning America, he said, I feel I'm playing pretty well. The problem has been elsewhere. Second down and four. Play action by Grogan. Here comes the bomb. It's going to Bataha. Oh! The man could not quite stretch far enough. He got inside Tommy Marvezo. Uh, could not quite stretch. He's not all that big anyway. He's about 5'10". Feisty little duck himself. Watch this. That's Ed Taylor, 38 gift. And Alex, Ed Taylor loses him. Loses him. Marveso, a recent acquisition, is there. He scissored between them, and he's loose. But no. Just over the hand. Third down now and four. Stingley goes out to the right. Marlon Briscoe, who brought the play in, alternating with Fataha, out to the left. Brogan, all the time in the world, dumps it off to Cunningham. The big man has the first down, moving out over the 45-yard line to the 47-yard line. Cunningham is having quite a night. Don't forget, folks, next week we're in RFK Stadium, Washington, D.C., for a really big one. Remember that? <laughs> Washington against St. Louis. And the week after, we're in Baltimore for Billy White Shoes Johnson. The Houston Oilers against those spectacular young Colts of Baltimore and a close look at Burt Jones. Handoff, Johnson right side on first down over midfield, moving down to the 47-yard line. Gain of four, second down and six. Hit there by Phil Wise for the Jets. Howard, <laughs> I, I was talking about Steve Tannen, the defensive back that used to play with the Jets, and, of course, he's a friend of mine, lives on the coast now, is becoming an actor. He was at one of my... He always was. Yes, one of my parties, and I introduced him to a person who didn't know Steve Tannen from anyone. He said, you don't know me? And he said, you'll know me maybe from this position, and he fell flat on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> he was the first-round draft judge from Florida. They marked it at the 48, call it second down and six. Johnson in motion. Grogan dumps it off to Cunningham as the flag goes down. Cunningham down very close to a first down, but that flag goes down in that area where usually we get the holding call. We have 6.33 left in the third quarter. It's 27 to 7, the New England Patriots. They've been a most impressive team tonight, regardless of the quality he's just, of defense. He's just happy he's there. He doesn't care if he's and, winning or losing. That's yeah, a good time. Yeah. Oh, boy. Penalty being marked off against New England. Let's find out who's responsible. I guess he smiles. Offense number 70. Leon Gray. I guess he smiles more as the score grows higher. Yes, smile a while, that's your style. I think they better keep the sense of humor. It's a long season. And they have an interesting coach. He seems to have kept his sense of humor. I don't know how funny it's going to be in December. It's second down and 16. Grogan again the play action. And he gets riffled as he... Attempts to go to Stingley. Rogan was really hit in a very awkward position, but he bops right back up. It was Lawrence Pillars that stormed in on Rogan. Well, New England has scored touchdowns on four of six possessions. They have engineered drives of 58, 64, 57, and 73 yards, respectively. 6.27 left to go in the third quarter, and I suspect they want more. Third down, 16. Yeah. 
Jets only rushing two men. And Bataha makes a very patented Randy Bataha gets right on the sidelines. Oh, almost impossible to defend against. And gets the first down. He's down to the 38-yard line, inside the 38. Let's look at it again. You have to respect this little man because he'll go deep on you. And he took Schaefer Suggs, took him back until he started to drive, and then he turned to the outside. Recovering from a triple fracture of the cheekbone. To think they didn't want him when he first came up. I don't mean the Patriots. They wound up with him. Rams initially drafted him in the 16th round. It was one of their last cuts. They joined Jim Plunkett here. Randy Bataha. First down. Rogan once more. There's the big man, Russ Francis. His first reception of the night. I've been waiting all night for them to put him on display. This is a truly super athlete. Earlier in the year, I said he could be all world, and I mean it. He didn't play football in his senior year at college. He is a great all-around athlete. A marvelous javelin thrower. Let's take another look at this. On his way to possibly represent the United States in the Olympics as a javelin thrower, he injured his arm. And I'm pretty sure that he's related to Joe Francis, one of the great Oregon State ball players that I played against in the uh, in the um, Rose Bowl game. I don't know. I don't know. I he grew up in Hawaii. Yes, Joe did too. On first down. And Sam Cunningham storms into the end zone. Oh, wow. I said they wanted more. They got it. Cunningham. Putting on quite a show tonight with the young quarterback, Steve Grogan. 14 times he's carried the ball, 82 yards. And now extends New England's lead with 6.08 remaining in the third quarter. A lot of happy fans up here. They're going to be happy for some time to come because this is a young football team. Oh, yeah. Grogan, what is he, 24, 25 years old? He's going to be around a long, long time. John Smith for the conversion. By right, clockwork. And New England has moved out in front of the Jets 34 to 7. We'll be right back. The New England Patriots with Sam Cunningham going in for the touchdown and moved out to a 34-7 lead over the New York Jets. And a revised New York Jets defense is having a problem. I'm sure glad I didn't see the old one. John Smith will kick off. Jackson Pacone are deep for New York. And we'll take a look at it from the end zone. Line drive, the field of there by Jackson at his seven-yard line. And Jackson is fielded out of the 27-yard line by Jess Phillips. And let's go back and look at Cunningham. Beautiful blocking, cross-blocking, opens the hole, and he comes. Well, Frank and Howard, when you play defense, you have to go to that ball. You have to be very aggressive. Now, there's some not very aggressive play on the on the half of the Jets. That's that Taylor. He's not doing anything but bumping, and you've got to come up and hit somebody. Here comes Neal on the defensive end, and he just falls over now. You can't do that as a defensive ball player. You've got to go up and become a pitcher. You can't be a catcher. Well, Frank mentioned the cross block, and a few weeks back, Frank described the perfect cross block, and we replayed it for you. And uh, it's a basic offensive technique. It's lodged in execution, as Mr. Lombardi used to say. Richard Todd is a Jets quarterback. And he overthrows on his first attempt to Richard Osborne, the rookie from Alabama. Richard Todd is now the quarterback for New York, number 14. Namath leaves the ball game, at least for this moment, with 16 completions out of 26 attempts, <laughs> 135 yards. Happy Sam Bam. That away, Sam. <laughs> you remember how it was at the university, how all of you yeah, in the glory of Gifford when he was there. <laughs> oh, yes. And the single win. Some of the good old boys. Mark Gaines, one setback, number 21, a rookie from Wake Forest. The other setback for Richard Todd, the quarterback, is number 35, Steve Davis. Todd going to David Knight is well covered by Prentiss McCray. 546 remaining in the third quarter, and the temperature is dropping. Going into the low 20s here in New England tonight. Winter moving in. 
I Joe? Don't know. Every time it's hot out, we have hot coffee up here. Every time it's cold out, we have cold drinks. What is going on? I'm sure glad Chet and Don's back, though. What a, what a nightmare last week. That's Ike Forty. He's from Arkansas, running back. Third down and ten. Todd can run. And tries to go to Caster, and <laughs> he is covered by McCray again, and Todd has to throw it over the ground. I will agree with your assessment that Todd can run. The jury is out on his ability to pass. <laughs> oh, don't be busy. Come on. <laughs> Man's out there trying. First year, it's all kind of vague when you come into this league. Dwayne Carroll will punt. Daryl Stingley is back there along with Bedoin and Mike Hayes. Carroll, not having one of the better nights punting, gets this one out of bounds at New England's 35-yard line. And we'll be returning to Foxborough in just a moment. The score, 34-7. New England has the football, first and ten, their own 35-yard line. The setbacks now, number 38, is Ike Forte. He's out of Arkansas, a rookie. Don Calhoun is in there, number 44, as Cunningham and Andy Johnson are going to get a breather. Quarterback remains broken. He hands off to Forte over the right side. And the rookie from Arkansas ambles for good yardage. Give him seven. It'll be second down and three. And so for the first time in the history of Monday Night Football, Alex, we have two gentlemen connected with the game who bear the same name. Ike Forte out there on the field and Chester Forte in no, our... No, it's 40. No, no, it's Forte. We're changing. Oh, it's we're spelled changing. the same All way. Right. That's what I couldn't figure out. In any event... F-O-R-T-E. <laughs> collect six yards. Make it second down and four. Get an all-New England ball game. And now they come with the reverse, and Briscoe trying to throw the ball. But it was Lawrence Pillars, number 76, all over him. And now they're saying that he gave up the ball, and we are hearing that the whistle had already blown. Briscoe came into pro football as a quarterback. Some years back, started with Denver, I believe, went right. on to Buffalo, exactly and then Miami, right. and Detroit. And he was going to try and throw the ball here. Down he goes. He was a quarterback in college, too, Frank. Created quite a stir with Denver because of... I thought I said that. I know. I, you, you, no, you didn't say in college. Oh. But I, he created quite well. a stir because of the fact that he was black. Third and 13. Firing over the middle, Francis has the first down. And look at the big man from Hawaii, battle linebacker Larry Keller. But he has the first down, close to midfield. That's Francis, did a little professional wrestling in the offseason. His father is a professional wrestler. I wouldn't want to meet the two of them. There isn't anything that young man can't do. What a career he's got ahead of him. You well, know, he can put a Hawaiian hex on you, too. That's what I understand he did do. What Oakland. is an Hawaiian hex? Well, I couldn't pronounce the word. <laughs> but it sounded like it was very effective. On first and ten. Forte in motion. Grogan to Calhoun. And Calhoun out of bounds at the 47-yard line, short of the first down, collected there by Ed Taylor. 3.02 remaining in the third quarter. There is no apparent mercy in this team tonight. Well, they have a lot of backup men in the ballgame, and they continue, continue to move. Let's take a look at this play from the end zone. Schaefer Stadium. Beautiful stadium, considering the construction cost was about six million dollars. Calhoun left side, and it'll depend upon where they mark it. I believe he gets the first down as they are going to mark it right at the 40. He got it. Marveso made the stop. A rookie from Cincinnati now in the secondary for the Jets. 
Frank, you want me to call play-by-play -play for a while? No. <laughs> <laughs> At the ground level, here you see Calhoun out sprinting the defenders to the sidelines and getting just enough for the first down. We've what? got 2.56 left in the third quarter, Alex. 34 to 7, the Patriots routing the Jets. 29th first down for New England. Grogan, Forte, and Forte out of bounds as he moves it down to the 35-yard line. We're only in the third quarter, Giff, and they keep stopping the clock. Short sideline hitches and out of bounds, picking up decent yardage every time. Lenny Dawson made a career of throwing that kind of pass to Otis Taylor when the Chiefs were in their glory years, and Otis would frequently break the tackle and go all the way. And Dawson would have the best completion percentage in football. Second down. Hand off inside. Forte. He's short of the first down. He needs to get to the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and about a yard. Eight different receivers now for New England on the part of their quarterback, Steve Grogan. You know, you... Can't really compare Grogan Howard and Alex to uh, Bert Jones. Bert Jones is a much bigger quarterback. Uh, Grogan goes 6'4", but he's only about 200 pounds. That, when you see uh, Bert Jones, I know most people have, but he's a 220-pounder. Right, he's a beautiful athlete. Now, Grogan physically, as I said, reminds me of Greg Landry. Third down now. Play action on third and short, and Grogan will get the first down and much more. And Wisely goes down to the 23-yard line after getting the first down. Well, that's their 30th first down, Howard. Right. I always look worriedly, though, at the quarterback when he goes down because right there he was hit on the shoulder, and it was the pitching shoulder by 55, John Ebersole. Andy Vataha moves in, drops the playoff with Grogan. And there he is. Good look at him. Let's look at it again. There's Russ Francis. He was the eligible receiver. Had Grogan been forced to put it in the air. First down at the 23-yard line of the Jets. Grogan is going to be sacked. All right. Okay. That's, now, that's Howard, what, that's what we were talking about. Screaming right? about it all game, Alex. I'll give you that. That you was John Ebersole who got in there. You just can't lay back like that all night and be the catcher. you got to go in and do something. And this time they do. They blitz the linebackers. When I say blitz, I mean the linebackers actually move out of the line of scrimmage and go towards the quarterback. That's what it's called, a blitz. I don't know why it's called a blitz. It's and you show some stunning and movement out there, either from the linebackers or up in the line, the way your linebackers used to when you had Lucci, Wayne Walker, and Paul Newmark. We'd have problems defensively. What we would do is uh, eventually we'd say, let's do something even though it's wrong. Let's move. <laughs> Looks like they may take a field goal if they don't pull this first down out. On second down, long yardage. Grogan wants to hold on a little Taha. And just off his fingertip, Ed Taylor trying to stay with him. But Grogan just was a little long. Yeah, if perfectly thrown, they had another touchdown. Patriots leading 34 to 7. It's not over yet, though, Frank and Howard. You know as well as I do that any team on a given Sunday, or even on a Monday sometimes, can come back. It's a matter of inches. Well, they better get a couple of, of shots. It'll probably be next Monday that things will happen again for us. <laughs> okay, it's third down and 20. Out to the right goes Stingley. They'll watch it from the end zone. Broken under pressure again. And this time he's taken down. With number 27, Phil Wise of safety in there with Larry Keller. And that eliminates the possibility of the field goal. John Smith was warming up. That was good uh, sound judgment to do that. They blitzed everyone. Defensive backs and everyone came in that time, Howard. Should have been doing it in the first quarter. Not that it really would have changed anything. But at least it should have been tried. The second punt of the game for New England. Mike Patrick, Jazz Jackson, safety. Come on, Jazz, bring it back. Jets going for the block. 
Oh, and they just about got it. And it. Jazz Jackson makes an error. Oh, boy. Jazz Jackson down 34 to 7. Thought he'd take a shot at it. Roman, Romanition made the recovery for New England. Jim Romanition. I've played in a lot of games like this, Frank. I know exactly how they're feeling right now. Nothing seems to happen right. One thing leads to another. Well, there is 11 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. And the Patriots have the ball inside the 12-yard line of the New York Jets. And there's the recovery again. Romanition getting down for the coverage. Jackson figuring, well, why not? Thought he could pull it off. Bobbled the ball. And Calhoun corns into the end zone. And nothing is stopping the Patriots tonight. Seven seconds remaining in the third quarter. And yeah. Calhoun... Goes into the end zone from the 12-yard line. With the ball of Calhoun, he did it. Don Calhoun, third-year man out of Kansas State. He only carried the ball 17 times coming into tonight. He was a teammate, as I said earlier, of Steve Grogan when they were at Kansas State. I like the way he Look runs. at the balance. Look at the balance. Oh, to be able to do that again, huh, Frank? <laughs> what, spike it? <laughs> no play tennis after a decent. John Smith puts it through. And the Patriots are pouring it on the New York Jets. With seven seconds remaining in the third quarter. They lead the Jets 41 to 7. You know, spiking uh, had rather an adverse effect on one of the rookies for New England Patriots. You know, they've never run back a punt in regular season play or preseason. And in preseason this year, I think we saw it in the highlights, Mike Hayes, the had a punt return of 70 yards and just before he crossed the goal line and I mean just before about 10 yards before he spiked the ball remember when we had Dave Smith of Pittsburgh do that in a regular season game it can be a little embarrassing John Smith will kick off Jazz Jackson Lou Picone are dropping deep to the Jets there they are Jackson 43 he was the one that took the gamble on the punt a moment ago 89 is Picone and a very rejected New York Jet. Well, I'll tell you something, Frank. Peter the Greek Karras told me it was going to be a landslide in New England, and I wouldn't believe him. Smith hits it. Jackson finds the handle this time. Oh, and he is really nailed and upended by Jess Phillips, who is doing great work oh. on the special teams for New England. We play. talked about him, Howard, and, and uh, how he's been traveling so, you know, back and forth to different ball clubs. I'll never know. He gives you all he has all the time. End of the third quarter. You're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports. As we look at that replay again, and with mm -hmm. the score, New England 34-41, the New York Jets 7. Wow. We'll return after this word from our local station. Go get him, Jesse. <laughs> New England pay penalized on that kickoff. The Jets take over first and 10, their own 44-yard line. Setbacks, Mark Gaines, 21. Davis, 35. The quarterback is Todd. Oh, and a violent collision. The pass intended for Richard Castor. Give you an idea of how chilly it is as the temperature at game time started at 42. You're looking at Leon Gray, the fine blocking tackle for New England. It started at 42 degrees and it was expected to go into the 20s by the end of the game. Doesn't feel that way to the Patriots, Frank. It's a sad evening for the Jets, whose owners are very decent people, who've tasted what it is to win it all, and who now have this long rebuilding process ahead of them. They're going to have to prove they've got the organization to be able to rebuild. First round draft pick, Richard Todd, the quarterback, fires over the middle, flag goes down, he completes the pass to Caster, who is down to the 47-yard line, short of the first down, but again, a flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. Holding against New York. Again, this Saturday, Missouri goes against Nebraska. 
And of course, Missouri ranked number six in the nation in total offense with 416 yards a game. That's, that's really moving it. Nebraska, they're ranked third in the polls. Missouri, seventh in the polls. So that's NCAA college football on Saturday. Missouri against Nebraska. Frank, they're committed to go in the future with draft choices, not trade any of the few quality players they have. That means they've got to make the right draft choices, and they've got to prove they can do it. Second down and 20. This is Gaines on the screen. And he splits a couple of Patriots, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, where it will be third down. And speaking of draft choices, Howard, there is a little interesting happening today in that regard. And of course, there's some question, I understand. Well, much of what happens in sports today that's most important, unfortunately, takes place outside of the arena, Frank, rather than within it. And the National Football League said today that the appeals court has confirmed the league's position that the Roselle rule is a subject to be resolved in collective bargaining. This judicial clarification, the league says, should pave the way for resolution of these matters at the bargaining table. And Todd will go down on third down. As has been done in baseball, basketball, and in hockey. Now that comes from the National Football League office. Based upon prior adverse decisions against the league, the Roselle rule had been declared illegal. For those of you who don't understand the Roselle rule, we're not going to give you a legal treatise or education right now. It's what they call the option compensation rule. Man plays out his option, spends a year with a club, then goes to another club. Roselle had the power to decree compensation for the lost player. Now that becomes a matter for collective bargaining. All right, on fourth down, Dwayne Gerald comes out and fake punt. And rolling down the sidelines with the New York Jazz number 51 is Greg Puddle, who has been performing well as a linebacker for them. You'll see the quick snap over to the right. I don't know what New England was expecting with the 41 to 7 lead, but they got it. 25 yard pickup, and Buttle gets the first down. I think he's become the leading rusher now for the Jets, Frank, with a total of 23 yards. Yes, he is. I'm right up on it, Frank. Right up on it. On first down, Todd back looking, dumps off to Gaines, and he's oh, hit immediately. Oh, oh, oh. Coming up there very quickly, number 40, man we've been talking about all evening, Mike Haynes, a rookie from Arizona State. And this is one of the young men who came to New England in the trade for Jim Plunkett, along with three number one draft picks and two number twos. Tom Owen, and we saw him last year, Howard, uh, perform for San Francisco. He's a good young ball player. Comes from Wichita State. We thought he had a real future with San Francisco, but then in that Plunkett deal, which Frank has earlier described to you. Second down. And so is Todd. <laughs> To finish my sentence, they came up with a veritable bonanza here in New England. This team has been thoughtfully put together. Incidentally, we've put 48 points on the board tonight, 41 for the Patriots. This is not the most points we've ever had, fellas, on Monday Night Football. Indeed, we opened in September of 70, the Jets against the Browns, and the Brownies won that one 31 to 21. And I believe we may have had our greatest total in the second game of that first year, I believe, when Kansas City ripped Baltimore in Baltimore. I think that was 43-24. Third down and 15. And Todd flips it out to Gaines. He gets away from one tackle there, and a flag goes down. Good move by Gaines. And the flag is down again. Face mask. And it goes against New England. Then, Frank, if memory serves me well, we had that game in Denver against Kansas City on the night a competitive network played the Godfather. Defense, face mask, number 54, first down. Well, there was an awful lot of scoring then. There has never been a memory that served anyone like yours serves you. <laughs> 
and I can vouch for it. That's the first down on that call. Inside handoff, and there goes Davis. And Davis gets another first down down to the 21 yard line. Steve Davis out of Delaware State. You already heard Howard describe some of his earlier problems. He came up as a third round draft pick in 1971 with the Steelers. Missed all that rookie season, had a viral infection, couldn't play, quit a couple of times. And the Jets have acquired him, and they would really like to go with him. He has a lot of ability. 71 was the year Noel had that remarkable draft that laid the foundation for the later twice Super Bowl champion. On first down. Todd and ooh, and we almost had six. Hustling up there, coming close to the six-point interception was Tim Fox. Oh, and he'll have a nightmare about that tonight. And look the way he walks. He has a hip pointer. He has a broken <laughs> wrist. He has just been really bombed around. He's a hospital case. Oh, he's so intent. He keeps saying, I'm hurt, but where, where? He doesn't care. You know, it's all on the left side, too. He broke his left wrist. He has his left knee hurt. He had a left <laughs> hip pointer. Well, he should give up his right side a little bit, Frank. You saw one of your basic freaks run through the camera. You did. You know, the tragic part of all of this is the great game the New England Patriots have played. Should have get really out of line. They could forfeit this game. You have to maintain control, of, maintain control of your own ballpark. Well, it's almost Halloween, Frank and Howard. I saw enough that last game, the American League Championship Series. I've seen enough at Shea Stadium. At Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, in San Francisco, you see it everywhere. And it's a deeply troubling thing. It really is to see people behave this way. Second down and ten. Todd with Gaines open, and Gaines turns oh, oh. right into Mike Gaines. It will depend upon where they mark it. I think he has the first down. No, now they... Mark it inside just about the 12 yard line. And he had to get to the 11. Take a look at it again. There he is. And uh, here comes Haynes. He looks like a tough kid, Alex. That Haynes, you'll find out also that he'll probably be one of the best athletes on the football field because any guy that can run backwards as fast as he can run frontwards, you know he's a darn good athlete. Probably, probably can play any kind of sport. Third down and three. Todd underthrows a man wide open. It was intended there for Clark Gaines. Todd rolling out. Under and you're, game. Frank, in your opinion, and I, I mean this in all sincerity, and, and Howard also, I, I'd like to know, what do you think really what the Jets need? Well, I, have to I mean, not tonight, because they need they a doctor. They have to begin at the beginning. They've got to build a sturdy defensive line and an offensive line that's young and strong, can learn how to pull and block. You can't keep going, unfortunately, with such past great players as Winston Hill. Then they have to get the running backs. They, they, they need virtually everything. There are spots of strength. Richard Castor, Jerome Barkham, the pass receiving department. And they have to hope that Richard Todd will prove to be the young quarterback to build upon. First down and goal, offsides against Gray Hamilton of New England. Todd looking for Castor. He was held up, and Todd is sacked at the 10-yard line. I do think they've got a beginning in the linebacker department with Greg Buttle. I don't know if the sixth-round draft choice from Nebraska, Martin, is big enough, strong enough. He only goes 2-10. But you can't wipe him out for that reason because look at the career Chris Hanberger, for instance, has had. Oh, yeah. So there's a beginning in the lineback department. Let's look at this again. Pete Barnes does a good job here coming in. And you'll see Ray Hamilton strong, pop yeah. in here. They're still hustling. I like that. It's well, they move around a lot. Second down and goal. Ball at the 10 yard line. Todd oh, oh, oh. puts up the alley oop. And it's taken, but off the playing field. There's one other kid they've got, Alex, that I like based upon what he's shown tonight. The Jets, I mean. Number 76, Lawrence Pillars. An 11th round draft choice from Alcorn. And it seems clear, based upon his performance this year and even tonight in this debacle, that he has the capacity to grow and to become an important player. 
New Hope. He needs an Alka Seltzer, is what he needs tonight. He did a fine job, North Carolina State. He's really done a fine job with what he has to work with. Uh, you've just been describing, you've got to have the people or you're not going to be a coach. Third down. Pass attempt. Caster over the middle, incomplete. And Tim Fox, who grew up in Canton, Ohio, the home of our spotter, Steve Bazika, the home of the Hall of Fame, in there for the breakup. And organizationally, Frank, as a follow-up to what you said about Coach Holtz, we're looking at Richard Castor again. You've got to have the organization, the scouting system, so that your drafting is judicious. Otherwise, you saw that. Otherwise, the draft doesn't really fulfill your needs. There is Chuck Fairbanks looking on as the Jets again go on fourth down. Fourth and goal from their own 10-yard line. Well, you can get up. You can't now. All the way back to the 20-yard line. Todd goes down on his own. And New England takes over. Again, in fairness, Alex and Frank to the Jets. They played tonight with two defensive stalwarts injured. 77, Paul Bozalowskis, and 81, Billy Newsom, who was good enough to play on the Super Bowl team of Baltimore a number of years ago. Bozalowskis is really disappointed the Jets however this year and last year we'll be back in a moment back at Schaefer Stadium in Foxborough Massachusetts 952 remaining in this football game and it is 41 to 7 New England over the Jets and we have Tom Owen now at quarterback for New England he hands off to Jess Phillips New England calmly and patiently dominating this game they're looking forward now to next Sunday they play Buffalo Tony McGee had himself a fine night. And he agrees. Yes, you did, Tony. And those of the and Bills... You didn't. I wouldn't say anything about it. <laughs> those of the Bills watching this game, remembering how they lost to the Jets last week, must be wondering about themselves. Second down and seven. And down goes Cunningham, who had a whale of a night also for New England. They had him out of there for a while. We just want to alert... All the people along the line, except on the West Coast, that the local news will be coming up following this game. And you know, I've been, I'm sorry, Frank. I was going to say that'll be about breakfast time. I was thinking about coaching itself, you know, and, and I, I think the most successful coaches are those coaches that were coaches and general managers. Vince Lombardi, Lombardi certainly. And, and guys like that who had, the, who had the total command of what they were doing and... Uh, and wasn't judged by three or four different people and went on and, and made some trades and made some deals quickly. Tom Owen drilled one in there that Daryl Singley couldn't hold on. I don't agree with what you just said, Alex, as I look at some of the great organizations in the league. There's no better organization in a football sense than the Dallas Cowboys. Landry is the coach, and in effect, Tex Schramm is the general manager, though the president of the club. And the head of player personnel is Gil Brandt, who's brilliant at his job. Take the Rams, Knox the coach, Blossom and the general manager. So I don't think that necessarily obtains. And look at the history that Jim Finks is writing now with Chicago. You didn't know you were that wrong, did you? <laughs> no, no, I still, I still believe in my convictions. And I, and I, think, I think the Washington Redskins is an example of that. Mike Patrick hits it for New England, the third punt of the game. Jazz Jackson. Oh, and he has got a lot of Patriots with him. And down he goes, 24-yard line. So the Jets will take over with 8.26 remaining in the game, and they're trailing New England 41 to 7. We'll be returning in just a moment. Eight minutes, 26 seconds remaining in this football game from Foxborough. Next week, we're going to be in the nation's capital, the Redskins against the Cardinals. And things tighten up a little bit in that eastern division of the NFC when Dallas went down to St. Louis yesterday. Right now, we're watching the New England Patriots dominate the New York Jets. They're in the fourth quarter, and Steve Davis is nailed and nailed hard. He'll lose a yard. It'll be second down and 11. May I also remind you, since earlier time did not permit, Mr. Karras, about the Oakland Raiders and Al Davis and John Madden. Well, that's a different situation. They work hand in hand. I don't even consider that as a general manager, coach kind of situation, because they work together. But you take the two winningest coaches in the National Football League. George Allen certainly is over the 200, is it 200 mark now? 100. And Vince Lombardi. 
So there's two right there that were GM and, and head coaches. And Don Shula. Oh, that's right. Correct. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> and Todd goes out to the 35-yard line. First down, <laughs> and he gets his completion for the first to David Knight. And now Knight's shaken up. We mentioned the players that are missing for the Jets. Jerome Barkham was expected to see action tonight, and he is Namath's other favorite receiver, if there is such a term, besides Rich Castor. He has a very severely pulled hamstring, and he's been out since way early in the preseason. Here's, here's Knight. <laughs> Shaken up as he makes the reception for the first down. Knight, by the way, played for Coach Holtz when Holtz was head coach at William & Mary. Davis dumped and dumped way back. Hustling in there real quickly was Richard Bishop. <laughs> so you have George Allen, Vince Lombardi, <laughs> and Paul Brown. And ah, Don Shula. And yes. Don Shula. Finally, you got some support oh, from the Giffen. I knew I was right there. Huh? Is you know, I'm just saying at certain times when you can call your own shots and you don't have to, I to discuss or argue, I it really does help a ball club in, in a time of real need. And, and in Detroit years ago when we were, I would think, a, a, a darn good football team, we needed a couple players one way or the other, we had to go to a committee of 16 men who either nodded yes or, or said no, and that was the end of our season at times. Come on, you and Giff have adopted a surreptitiously conspiratorial posture. <laughs> you said it. I didn't. <laughs> We're also rather hostile. <laughs> First down following the offsides. And out to Bob Gresham goes Todd, and... <laughs> <laughs> the Jets pick up a first down in midfield. Rather hostile, eh? <laughs> That'll produce 40 columns saying we don't get along, Giff. <laughs> I'll take Nuke Rockney, for instance. <laughs> no, you take Nuke Rockney. <laughs> Let's keep it in the realm of <laughs> reality. Reality, which is impossible, I guess, <laughs> at this point. <laughs> All right, the first down for the Jets with Richard Todd at quarterback. Inside the 49-yard line of New England. Todd, right on the money with that pass. Again, Richard Castor, and he was working against Mike Haynes, <laughs> who continues to show us plenty tonight. Come to think of it, I'll take Mr. Rockney. In 1930, Karen Caridio, or Caridio, as you will, Schwartz, Brill, and Savoldi, Bert Metzger, the watch charm guard, unbeaten. I'll take that, Dean. New England's only negative statistic tonight. They've been penalized 10 times for 75 yards. It does not reflect on the scoreboard in any negative way. Second down and 10. End zone shot. Richard Todd. A lot of time, he hangs up a bomb, oh, and a flag is going to go down as Richard Castor was battling back there with Dick Kahn, number 22. Do you think he called that against Castor, Giff? Flag is down, and we'll... They did collide while the ball was in the air. And yep. it does go against Castor, offensive interference. Uh, there, you'll see right at the bottom of your screen, down around the 15-yard line, Dick Kahn getting involved with Rich Caster. Right now, let's pause five seconds and allow the local stations on the line to identify themselves. Number 88, offensive pass interference refused. Offensive pass interference against Rich Caster refused. And the Jets have a third down. Again, we remind you, except on the West Coast, the local news will be coming your way as soon as we leave the air. We have 6.47 remaining here in the fourth quarter. It's your Todd, the rookie from Alabama, over the middle, and he finds Gresham, and Gresham has the first down, down close to the 30-yard line. Steve Zabel moving back there to make the stop. Been a big night for the Patriots. They've had outstanding performances from not only their offensive unit, Steve Grogan. They, of course, always attract all the glimmer. We watch once again from the end zone. This is Davis over the right side. That'll be second down and five, but they've had 
a good defensive performance from Tony McGee and Ray Hamilton. Sugar Ray, a name they gave Sugar when he was a youngster. Not young anymore. He's grown up at middle linebacker. Came up with the 14th round draft pick. That's number 71, right in the middle of that line. He'll get back. Todd fires and Howard Satterwhite holds on down there. And he Todd, and Todd is throwing better. That was a well-thrown football. Hey, we came into the game. He had to be just a little chilled because the temperature has really dropped. Satterfield was acquired by the Jets from Washington and following the Washington Redskins final cut. He scored a touchdown against the Jets in preseason when with Washington. Holtz was impressed. Remember, Holtz turned his whole team, essentially his whole team, over. There was a real purge just prior to the first game. Right. And moving inside the 10 goes Bob Gresham. It is second down. Second down and seven. They can make a first down down around the two-yard line. <laughs> There's Lou Holtz looking on. He's been around a while. He's a, he's a good coach. He knows the shortcomings of this team, and there are numerous. But they have some young players that are beginning to develop. Gresham pops in there for well, maybe a yard. Well, I, I'd have to say the best young football team in the league right now, Howard, has to be the Baltimore Colts. They turned that face around three or four different times. When you say young, years. yes. But I think the Patriots are... Very close to being able to challenge them. I still think Pittsburgh will come back. You saw them do just that against Cincinnati. I think Dallas is super. Well, they're consistent. That's one thing about Dallas. They're awesome. <laughs> Third down. Over the middle and in and out of the hands of a jet receiver. Los Angeles remained solid despite the loss last week to San Francisco. And, of course, Minnesota is an always solid football team. Shul is in trouble this year but he will rebuild more quickly than most. They've got the organization, they've got the system. Is he the general manager too? Yes. yes. That's the reason, Howard. Gifford jumped in and helped you with that. <laughs> and fourth down. And the Jets will go again on fourth down. Todd now, eight of 19. Been sacked a couple of times. And he fires it into a crowd down there is and connects collected but to amplify that which we were talking about Alex there is a gradually developing change in the balance of power in the league because San Diego is vastly improved we have 350 left in the game the Bears are clearly on the verge of becoming a very strong team with the extraordinary wall of Peyton and Cincinnati is a very solid football team, too. It's an interesting league. We'll be back in a moment. Buick and... And the Patriots will move from their own three-yard line. This is Calhoun back in the ball game. Gets out to the five-yard line. Nailed there. It's been an all-New England game throughout the entire period. They took their first possession, marched 58 yards for a touchdown. It was never in doubt from that moment on. A strong team, a team that has defeated Miami, Pittsburgh, and Oakland. They dropped one to Detroit. They dropped the season's opener to Baltimore. As Lou Holtz looks on, he won his first game as a professional coach last week against Buffalo. Not a whole lot of smiles. Second down and eight. The ball at the five-yard line. New England now with Tom Owen, a quarterback, following a great performance from Grogan. Hands off to Phillips, and Phillips is putting on quite a show as he moves out to the 15 for a first down. He starred, of course, at Michigan State, Phillips did. Got into deep personal problems. And it was Paul Brown who elected to give him an opportunity in professional football. He can run. He hits. You've seen him on the specialty teams. You're looking at him here when he just wouldn't be brought down. Tremendous individual effort. And I don't understand either, Alex, why he's been so traveled. Play for my ball club any time he wants to. Clock ticking away on first down. Handoff goes to Jess Phillips again. Go ahead, Jesse. Go on. He's in a foot oh, race. Oh, come on. Sets back, and of all people, he's taken down by the big tackle, number 76, Lawrence Pillars. But Jess Phillips showing some 
There's the speed as the clock ticks down towards the two-minute warning. Let's look at it again. 47-yard run. Good blocking out in front. That's Russ Francis, number 81. And then just fine running. All right, there's no one. There's no one. There's no one tackling out there at all. And I'll tell you something. If I was a coach, when I looked at these movies, I'd get on someone right now because there isn't a soul out there that wants to bring him down. There's the two-minute warning. And we'll be returning to Foxborough right after this message. Des Phillips just went 47 yards. New England in jet territory again at the 39-yard line. And Don Calhoun gets the stall. He gets a couple of yards. It'll be second down at eight. Inside the final two minutes. Obviously, the Jets a long way away in their rebuilding program. The New England Patriots could well be there. And they needed this game to stay close to the Baltimore Colts, who are 5-1 and one in the Eastern Division of the AFC, while New England is now <laughs> going to be 4-2. <laughs> Look at Giggle. I don't believe that, fella. Oh, he's just happy. He started laughing in the first quarter, and whatever whoever told him the story must have really laid a good one on him. <laughs> <laughs> if I were his coach, I'd lay a good one on him, I'll tell you. Ooh, and we almost had a collision, and the backs got a little bit confused back there. Calhoun. <laughs> is corralled at the 43-yard line. It'll be a loss of four, third down 14. You know, that, that scene really goes back to the disaster we had in Houston a number of years back when Oakland, albeit playing badly, crushed the Oilers 34 to nothing, and we had Dandy Don's memorable line. Do you remember? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can remember a few of them. <laughs> what was that one? What the old Cowboys say? We're number one. That's what oh, he means. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. Third down, 15. <laughs> oh, and as a man open, it was Daryl Stingley uh, threw it just a little high. So we have 32 seconds on the clock and a fourth down for New England. There's Tom Owen, a third-year man out of Wichita State. Despite a 41-7 lead, he wants to show that he can do what Grogan did. Hey, he won four out of five for the 49ers last year when they got into quarterback troubles. He was amazingly controlled and disciplined for a guy who had had such a paucity of action until pressed into the... And as long as we're digging, he went to Turner High School in Kansas City and played right. against Grogan. Yeah. <laughs> now, you top that one. <laughs> <laughs> you give me Grogan's high school, I'll just fake. <laughs> and I'm sure you're not you're pretty close to it. <laughs> on fourth down. New England working on the clock. I'm sure the Jets will be content to let it run out, and it's Jess Phillips who is really putting in quite a football game here tonight. Don't forget, Saturday coming up, we have Missouri and Nebraska, NCAA college football, and then Monday night we'll be in the nation's capital, Washington and St. Louis. What a job Don Coyell has done. Despite an injury that sidelined Terry Metcalf, he's got the replacement backs. He proved it against Dallas. He's some kind of coach. And he shored up that defensive line, which he is really, really has. Ball club. You guys left my man out, Jim Hart. What a day he had. 23 seconds remaining. The Jets take over. Namath is long since retired to the sidelines. You're looking at the rookie from Alabama, Richard Todd. Steve Davis runs to the right, and the Jets obviously are going to work on the clock themselves, ticking off the final seconds. Thank our statistician, Jerry Klein, the spotter, Steve Bazika. And the Jets will lose this one 41 to 7. And New England remains strong, remains in contention in their division of the AFC. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 